The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. As the season began and Ford rolled out its big guns, have you driven a Ford lately was the last concern of Chevrolet's Bowtie Brigade as they unleashed the new Monte Carlo on Daytona's historic high banks. There wasn't a Ford in sight to watch the duel between Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt. The second Daytona in a row for Marlin. For Dale, the Daytona 500 remains an elusive dream. It's the Daytona 500. I ain't supposed to win the damn thing, right? Oh, yeah. I like his place. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was laughing as Brooke Gordon and everyone else watched her husband Jeff at the wheel of his Chevy Monte Carlo dominated Rockingham, leading 391 of 492 laps and positioning himself as one to watch in NASCAR. And Terry Labonte took Richmond, making it three straight for Chevrolet and two in a row for car owner Rick Henderson. Can Chevrolet continue their winning ways? We're about to find out. The fourth race of the season at Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's the Purolator 500. Hi and welcome. We've got a great afternoon of racing here on ABC Sports for you. The stock cars here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, the international race of champions. And what we have here for you now is a classic battle between manufacturers, Ford, Chevrolet. Remember, Atlanta is considered to be a Ford track. In fact, seven of the last ten races here have been won by Ford, two by Chevrolet, one by Pontiac. So if Ford's going to have their chance here early in the season, this could be the track where it's going to happen. But right now, the first five cars in the starting field are Chevrolet, led by pole sitter Dale Earnhardt. Here's Jerry Punch. Paul, it may be surprising to the casual NASCAR fan that two of the sport's most dominant drivers in recent years are winless thus far in 1995. But in reality, it isn't that unusual. Only one of Rusty Wallace's series leading eight wins a year ago came in the first seven races. And Dale Earnhardt didn't win his first race last year until Darlington, and that is still two weeks away. But the big story here in 1995 was the impressive debut of this baby right here, the Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Now, the GM engineers have done their homework. The rounded nose and tapered tail have produced a balanced downforce that's been downright unbeatable in the first three events of the year. Then they come here to Atlanta and sweep the top five spots in qualifying, including a record-setting pole run by Dale Earnhardt. So don't be surprised if the Chevrolet shuffles continue today and they make it four in a row. Let's go to Jackaroo. Well, Jerry, you're right. They're all. We have to go all the way back to the outside of row three before we find a Ford nameplate on the front of a car that belonging to Ricky Rudd. Now, one thing that the NASCAR officials have done is they've made some rule changes for this race. They've allowed the Fords a little flatter side side area in the quarter panel. They've changed the spoiler in the front and they've lowered the spoiler in the rear. They've reduced it. And many of the people say that that should have helped. It didn't help in qualifying. But the jury is still out as to how the fours will perform in drafting conditions. And the draft does come into play here. One thing, John Kernan, the jury is not out about in the early going of 1995 is the Young Lions and their performance thus far. Jack, to see how well the Young Lions are doing this season, and in particular here at Atlanta, you need to look no further than the front row. That's where Bobby Labonte, a 30-year Winston Cup driver, starts the race today. Now, two weeks ago, and only his third race for car owner Joe Gibbs, he finished second behind another Young Lion, Jeff Gordon, with three career victories, to his credit, in three years on the circuit. Now, both of these drivers expect to have good days today, but they are in Chevrolets. Leading the Young Lion contingent of Fords all the way back in the eighth spot, Derek Cope with two career victories, but many people say that Derek has matured and is coming into his own as a Winston Cup driver. You can go a little further back. Jeremy Mayfield, 14th. John Andretti, 15th. Both are in a Ford. Expect to have a great day. So in a few minutes, when Doyle Ford drops the green flag right up here at the starter stand, we'll keep an eye on those young guys as well. Now, covering the action today for us is Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons up on top of the grandstand. And, guys, it's one thing to go quick and qualify, and another to go quick for 500 miles. You're absolutely right, Paul. A lot has been made of this Chevy situation this year, and, indeed, it's the first time in history that Chevy has won the first three races of an NASCAR Winston Cup season. But, Benny, you have to salute Chevy for doing all that hard work last winter. You know, the victories at Rockingham and Richmond were no surprise because last winter as the teams were testing and building the cars, that's what they were saying. The cars would really be good at Rockingham, Richmond, and here in Atlanta. Daytona was a surprise. It's almost reminiscent of 10 years ago when the Ford Thunderbird had so much success. Everyone said that Ford built a race car and tried to sell it to the public. Today, that's what they're saying about Chevrolet. They built a race car. They're trying to make it a passenger car. Well, in the next four hours, we'll see how things go. Can Chevy win and again, we'll be back for the starting lineup just before the green flag for the start of the Purolator 500.
magic of television. They're amazing. <laughs> Them guys are really good. They're good. You guys are terrific. Good. Must be that score. <clears throat> Police so guy. Neil, you're going to say a local break when you when I cue that. To, okay, okay. All righty. And I'll shut up. <laughs> you, you need that? No, I'm fine. You both do the field, right? You do it together, just you. Um, I don't know. We 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 somehow. Yeah, I won't know. I'll just say we'll break. I'll smack you. Good. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right over here on the left side. <clears throat> How long has this been since Walter qualified this way? for the start of the Purolator 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The engine's already running down on the starting field, sitting on pit road and ready to roll out. Today is a magnificently beautiful day. It's going to be perfect for watching racing. It's going to be perfect for running on this race course. Now, the track here is just a bit over a mile and a half long. And the real key to that is that most of the time in the lap, you're turning. So tires are important and handling is extremely important here. Race analysis for today, we're going to go 500 miles. That's 328 laps. And of course, we've already indicated that Dale Earnhardt will lead the field toward the green flag. First fuel stops will come at about the 55th lap through the 60th lap. So now as the field begins to pull away, today's field, 42 cars, four provisionals, Ford's dominating the field. Now let's take a look at this starting field. Dale Earnhardt's pulsating speed is a new event record by about five miles an hour. Outside of row number one, for the second time in his career, will be Bobby Labonte. The second row, the winner at Rockingham, Jeff Gordon, and Darrell Waldrop, who has three wins at this facility. Row number three, Terry Labonte with two wins in the last five events, and the 1987 winner of this race, Ricky Rudd. The fourth row, the Daytona winner, Sterling Marlin, and Derry Cope, who has two top ten so far this year. In row number five, driving for Richard Petty is Bobby Hamilton, and Dick Trickle, who finds himself ninth in the point standings at this point in the season. Back in row six, Jimmy Hensley and Rusty Wallace looking for his first victory in 1995. As we look at the rest of the cars, there's Mark Martin. Car is in practice, one of the fastest forwards here. Benny, one thing that Paul mentioned just a few moments ago is the fact that you are in a corner so long here, and it makes it uh, very tough on the driver as we get go out the, through the afternoon. Basically, the racetrack is a mile and a half. Each corner is a half mile long, and each straight is a quarter mile long, but you really can't use an entire quarter mile. The cars are straight about an eighth of a mile down the straightaway. Baby Jones, a uh, Indy car driver, back in row 13. Ken Schrader uh, has uh, turned in a qualifying performance that puts him on the inside of row number 15. Rookie Ricky Craven, who leads his tight actually in the point standings for rookie honors in row number 16. Jeff Bodine, a couple of veterans there in the 17th row. Hometown favorite Bill Elliott finds himself way back in the 19th row as we get set for the green flag here and uh, at least one more lap. The provisionals went to Michael Waltrip, Kyle Petty, also Randy LaJoy, and Jimmy Spencer. Well, five in cars will help us enhance our coverage of this event here today. Mark Martin will carry one as he warms up the tires here on the main straightaway. Brett Bodine has one in his car as he's in back of Ken Schrader. Dick Trickle will have one on the roof of his car. Looking at Derek Cope. Also Morgan Shepard in the Sitco Ford. It's John Andretti directly in front of him. And 
Jeremy Mayfield will also carry one of our in-car cameras. Here are the drivers who failed to qualify. Tenth in the point standings going into this event, Ward Burton. Last year's pole sitter for this race, Loy Allen did not qualify. Ben Hess and Poncho Carter both crashed during practice here for this event. Also, Loy Allen crashed in practice really hard. That was a, he did try to qualify back that car, second car, and was not quite fast enough. Here's Jerry Punch with a report from Pit Road just before the green. Guys, the cars that won this race a year ago had anxious moments this morning in the garage area. Dale Jarrett's Ford Thunderbird replaced their race engine. The muscle motor they brought here had a problem with the rocker arm being bent. They would put a motor in that was not designed to run here. So some concern early on in the Dale Jarrett pits. Let's go to Jack Aru. Well, Jerry, what a difference a year makes. You know, last year we were in the midst of the Hoosier tire, Goodyear tire battle. Hoosier has gone by the boards. But here's the situation. Goodyear has brought a brand new tire here. After problems, we'll tell you a little bit more about it later as we get ready for for the green flag. Ernie Urban is on the flag stand for the wave of the green flag. There it is, and the Pure Later 500 is underway. And a crash. Mike Wallace in the inside wall. The right rear tire is down. Didn't even get to the start finish line, and our first caution waves here on the speedway. Mike Wallace's car rather badly damaged, Benny. And under NASCAR rules, these cars are really racing back to the start finish line. Looks like it will be Dale Earnhardt who leads them around, and he will lead for the 25th race here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. He has now led for every race that has been run in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series this year. Well, kind of an auspicious start here as uh, Mike Wallace tags the inside wall before crossing the starting line, and let's take a look and see how it happened. We can see as he comes off the corner, did he get bumped from the rear? It's hard to tell, but uh, he could have. Let's try one more angle and just see. It looked like that the car starting directly in back of him may have uh, helped him. Let's see. Try to watch one more time. It was a kind of a slow start, and how in the world did Musgrave, did he get through that hole? Looks like maybe Jeff Burton might have just touched Mike Wallace in the back. Hard to tell. In any case, Mike Wallace's car is still down here and will have to be towed from the racetrack. Here's Jack Ruth. Bob, the most important thing that the crew wanted to know is just as we did, what happened? Mike Wallace radioed into the Heilig Myers crew that someone banged him in the back. You know, when you're getting ready, anticipating the start, sometimes you're riding back and forth and someone a little eager behind you can play a little bumper tag, but this time it was costly. Indeed it was, as it appears that Mike Wallace, although he is okay, you can see him there walking toward the ambulance, may be out of this race really before it begins. Back in just a moment. Okay, did we did anybody get a look at Jeff Burton's car that came by? I was watching Mike Wallace. Yeah, so was I. Was that where he gestured? Mm -hmm. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that probably is a good indication.
the left front bit looks like the left front spin. Yeah, it does. Something sticking out there. Though. Yeah, there's yeah, the sure front. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Right where the headlight goes. We're back at the Pure Later 500 Atlanta Motor Speedway. Here's the top 10. We're under caution. Really only one lap of competition. Pole sitter Dale Earnhardt jumped out in front, followed by Labonte, Waltrip, Gordon, and Terry Labonte. Then Ricky Rudd, Derek Cope. We keep an eye on him today. He's moving up. Sterling Marlin, Dick Trickle, and Bobby Hamilton. Now, we've been keeping an eye, too, on the eight car of Jeff Burton. There it is. And take a look, Benny, at the left front fender. What do you think? Where the left headlight would go on a street car, there is a dent on the eight car. So, obviously, he did tag the 90 car just a little bit. Not a lot of damage, but it doesn't take a lot as these cars are trying to accelerate forward. Now, maybe with this information, we can go back and look at the whole thing again, and it'll be a little clearer for us. Come off the corner. They're trying to get started. We can see that Burton just accelerated and touched the 90 car in the back and some pretty heavy damage. It's amazing that Wallace was able to hit the wall that hard this early going on the first lap. Another angle, the same situation. Of course, the field continued on at speed. Look at that. Boy, he's lucky he didn't get that head on. Those guys behind him are just forced that they were not in the crash. Let's watch from the Brett Bodine in car. Watch as the car just goes right in front of him. Wow. Could have been a much more serious situation. It's serious enough for Mike Wallace as his car is badly, badly damaged. And by the way, he started with this team that he is driving for in this event last year. There are some cars that are making pit stops here in the early going, including Kyle Petty in car number 42 and the 22 car, Brandy LaJoy. And the white car is Phil Parsons. All these cars started near the rear of the field, so what the heck? All right, let's uh, go to Jack Aroot, who can finish up the tire story that he uh, talked earlier about. Jack? Bob, very quickly, remember we had problems with tires last year in the fall race? Well, Goodyear's brought a narrower tire and a harder compound for the right side. Many of the competitors feel that will solve the problem that they encountered in this race, the fall version of it, last year. We're about to go green, hopefully for the first time, uh, and complete some laps here under green. Dale Earnhardt is at the front of the field at the moment with Bobby Labonte and Daryl Waltrip right behind him. The pace car pulls off of the racetrack in corner number four as we await the green flag. And there it is. Ernie Urban still waves the green flag, the uh, honorary starter for today's race. And now let's see if we can get some laps of competition in. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Ernie said, hey, I didn't get these guys, didn't run a complete lap, so I'm going to wave the green one more time. at the tail of the field, but up front they're in single file formation as Earnhardt once again leads them down in front of Bobby Lamonti. They pulled away a little bit from the third place competitor at the moment. It was Darrell Waltrip. And right on his back bumper is Jeff Gordon. Wow, heavy pack of cars as John N. Grady tries to dive to the inside of Steve Grissom. Grissom in the black 29. John Andre, the white 37. He's running right beside Morgan Shepard, with whom we ride at the moment. Mayfield is just ahead. John Andretti with impressive performances so far the year. And by the way, this is John Andretti's 32nd birthday today. Happy birthday. That's from Jeremy Mayfield's car looking back on the 21 of Morgan Shepard. Look how close they come off the corner. And Dale Jarrett picks up a position as he moves around to the inside of Morgan Shepard. Jeremy Mayfield, the 98 car, made a poor second corner. Allowed John Andretti to get the position. And John Kernan is with Mike Wallace. Mike, Mike Wallace has been checked out in the infield care center. Mike, you're okay, but it uh, looks like you got a little help, a little push from behind. Did it? People in front of you slow up at first on the start? 
Well, I don't know that anybody really slowed up. You know, we were in control of what was going on. It's just a shame the car behind us didn't pay attention to the start. I mean, we didn't even get the green flag yet. We hadn't even crossed the start finish line. And it's a shame, you know, the Heiling Meyer Four Thunderbird was, it appeared it was going to be a good day. And I, I cannot believe that they can't get through the start of the race. I mean, it was just impatient on the driver's part behind us. And it, it's just a shame. It just really is a shame. Mike Wallace had high hopes for today. Last November at this race, he came over to fifth place. And we have a crash up in corner number two that will involve several cars running at the tail of the field. Looks like Phil Parsons, the white car, is involved. Three or four of them spun, were able to keep going. There's Steve Kinzer in the 26 car who is involved. And Phil Parsons in number 19 that Benny mentioned. There's Dave Marcus in the 71 machine who has some damage on the left rear. The field moves through the area of the crash and is picked up by the pace car. Parsons begins to move away, although he too has heavy damage in the right rear portion of that machine. Let's take a look and see what happened. Well, they go down the corner. It looks like the 11 car of Brett Bodine and Steve Grissom are going to get together. Kinzer. Yes, yeah, Steve Kinzer. Brett Bodine 11, Steve Kinzer in 26. Just a little contact between those two. Kinzer spins. As he comes off the racetrack, other cars start trying to avoid him. The other 71 car goes through. Jimmy Spencer's involved. Randy LaJoy. There's Phil Parsons spinning in the accident. An unfortunate situation for Steve Kinzer as we once again look at it. You can see that three or four cars spun, hit the wall, slid to the inside of the racetrack. And for Steve Kinzer, he finally makes a race this year. In fact, turns in a very good qualifying performance, good enough to start 23rd. But now, in the early going, after only 10 laps, he finds himself involved in an accident and his car on the infield grass in turn number two. The safety crew goes to the uh, side of that Quaker State car to see if Steve is okay. We'll take another break and be right back at Atlanta. Seven cars also in. We didn't mention any. They got some body work hanging off that 22. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody to the hospital? I would. Okay. I would think so. Yeah, I didn't look. Like okay. later 500 Atlanta Motor Speedway our second caution of the day we had a caution right on the start and then on lap six went back to green flag racing and then four laps right later another incident this time in turn two and involving a number of cars back in the garage area for example they work right now on Jimmy Spencer's car a number of others trying to get everything that they can back into this race if possible 
Randy LaJoy, he had problems with it as too. It apparently all triggered with a contact between Steve Kinzer and Brett Bodine. Going down in turn one, that's Brett Bodine in the yellow car on the inside. The green car is Steve Kinzer. Brett gets the car a little bit out of shape. To catch it, he goes up the racetrack, touches the 26 and a quarter. He comes off the racetrack. Now, that's when the other cars will be involved as they try to avoid the spinning Steve Kinzer. There goes the 71 of Marcus. There's Spencer, the yellow car up there on the outside after contact with the wall. Now take a look at it from Brett Bodine's onboard camera. Kinzer riding just ahead. Whoa. pretty quickly though the trouble's all behind him yes and we see that the heavy damage on the 22 car of LaJoy back in the garage area they continue even Jimmy Spencer working on his car John Kernan Paul as you can imagine Jimmy Spencer very upset with what transpired out there on the track trying to take away some of that frustration by helping his crew work on the car they have got a lot of work to do they're going to have to replace some front end suspension parts as well as it looks like they're planning on replacing the rear end and, and possibly a couple of the trailing arms but they should be here in the garage area for quite some time. The well, joy crew they work on his car in the pits involved in this accident fortunately no reports of any injury didn't look like it John Andretti Dave Marcus Randy LaJoy Jimmy Spencer and Steve Kinzer but also involved Billy Stainbridge so uh, a fairly complex accident up against the wall in turn two started when Brett Bodine and Steve Kinzer got together only that was Phil Parsons that was involved in the crash and not John Andretti as we had listed there but a lot of bent sheet metal nevertheless as here comes Steve Kinzer's car on the back of a tow truck Everybody is okay. We have checked with the NASCAR officials and they say all drivers are in good shape. But the same cannot be said of a lot of race cars. There goes Randy LaJoy down pit road joining the race but without a right front fender. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Purolator 500 from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Stay with us. That's just going to deflate his bubble. That, just like you talked, mental. Yeah, that's right. Who that? Kinzer. Yeah. Because he was really pumped up. Huh? Yep. Yes. I've got to be tough for a guy like him. So is Brian. Do so yeah. good, and he knows he can. As he goes down, the, you need to back it up a little bit, can you? Back, 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 back it up. Back, 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 back. Okay, now let it roll. See, as he goes in the corner, right here, he gets the car sideways. You see how the car is sideways? Now when he when he catches it, there you go. Very good. <laughs> That's why we pay him the big bucks. Best. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no. That's right. Yep. <clears throat> okay. You just go on your own on that, right? We don't have to read through that. Right. So I'll recap here a little bit. We're back under caution. 15 laps complete of the 328 scheduled distance. We'll take a look at the full field rundown now. Of course, Dale Earnhardt started on the pole, went through that first lap caution period, leading to the line, picked up the lead again on lap six when they came back to green. 
and has continued to lead the field all the way around. This second caution is a result of a contact between Steve Kinzer and Brett Bodine. And Benny, we can take a look at this thing again, and it's a little clearer here. We're going to show you from the in-car camera in slow motion. Watch as Brett Bodine goes down the corner. Now, right here, he's going to lose control. Watch as the nose of the car heads for the infield. He corrects the car. To do that, he brings the nose around right in the left rear of Steve Kinzer's car. As Kinzer spins out of the way, Brett Bodine continues on, and the crash happened behind him. Of course, really caught up in that was Steve Kinzer, who is struggling to do well this year after coming off of that incredible success as a great sprint car champion. Right now, he's with John Kernan. Well, Steve has been checked out in the infield care center, and he is all right. And Steve, I tell you, what a rough year so far for you in Winston Cup. Well, we knew we was going to pay our dues, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had a good qualifying run down here, and we just wanted to sit out there and race a little bit today, but uh, yeah, we had a little incident uh, with Brett there getting in number one, and, you know, I just uh, want to thank uh, Quaker State and uh, the, all the people on this team for sticking with me, and, you know, if they, if they stay with me, I'm going to make them a good race driver. It's just going to take a little time for me to make the adjustment. What is the uh, most important thing you're going to have to adjust versus the open wheels? Because you were unbeatable in World of Outlaws. Well, you know, it's it's a lot of, you know, the weight of the cars, uh, the the length of the races. Uh, we, you know, we finished the last couple races, and we was going to get out and race a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know what happened there. We just went in the corner, and then all once I felt uh, somebody hit me in the, in the left rear quarter panel. So, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, somebody had... Uh, uh, pushed up into me or I got down a little lower what but uh, you know I felt like I ran my line in there and uh, it, uh, you know it's part of racing that happens once in a while it's uh, uh, I'd like to get out there and run a little bit. Well we're glad to see you're okay. Bob? It's really unfortunate for Steve Kinzer like I said earlier uh, he came in here pumped up for this race Paul because he has been struggling during qualifying but came in here and qualified 23rd best and really had uh, hope for good things during the race, but that didn't happen, and it really wasn't any fault of his own. Here is the green flag, and we are back to racing at Atlanta. In the front of the field, still running in the same order as Dale Earnhardt continues to lead Bobby Labonte, Daryl Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Terry Labonte. Gary Cope tried to get along Sterling Marlin, the Daytona 500 winner. That's Sterling in the orange car. Derek Cope, the white car. There's Cope, followed by Rusty Wallace in the black number two. We're on top of the Mark Martin car now. Through turns number three and four, and on to the main straightaway. Bonnie, second place, the 18 car, Interstate Battery car. What a great job he's been doing this year in the car. We haven't seen a whole lot of passing up front, Benny. Is this a period of adjustment of finding out what your car can do and seeing what the other guy can do? Exactly. Just ride a few laps, see what the chassis is going to do. Right there is going to be the trouble spot today. Coming off turn four. That's where the cars, after a few laps, after about 30, 35 laps, start picking up a push. And as these drivers, as the cars push towards the wall, they're going to want to jerk them away from the wall and sometimes spin in doing that. Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin continue their battle for the 10th position. There's Derek Cope leading this trio down the main straightaway. Jerry Punch has a report from the pit area. Jerry? Well, Benny Parsons, unfortunately, is a dreaded push here in Atlanta to not wait for 30 laps. It has shown his head here at lap 20. A couple of cars in the top five are already complaining as Rusty Wallace makes a pass. And they are side by side. Cope tries to come back on the outside. They are door to door out of turn four. But the push now becomes a problem, primarily for a couple of cars up front, including Jeff Gordon, and his car is plowing coming out of turn four. Jeff Gordon and uh, Darrell Waltrip and the others have fallen back from the top two as we continue to watch this very good race as Mark Martin moves to the inside of Rusty Wallace. Tell you what, that was almost a crash as Rusty Wallace got down in turn one, got the car loose, had to chase it up to the racetrack. But Mark Martin wisely backed off, let Rusty have the room. Now he's trying to make the pass. And a whole bunch of cars are behind Hamilton, Martin, and Wallace including John Andretti. Wow, what a shot. And now 
Jeff Gordon begins to make a move as he goes to the inside of Daryl Waltrip in the battle for third position, entering turn number three. Gordon has it. Terry Labonte will come along on the inside and try also to take a position away from Daryl Waltrip. They run down the straightaway side by side. That's the 10 car of Ricky Rudd also there, along with Sterling Marlin in car number four. Up front continues to be Earnhardt, but Labonte is not letting him get away by any means. Only separated by a couple of car lengths. There were those in the garage area today who said everybody is running for second place because Earnhardt has not covered. That is not what we have seen here in the first 24 laps of this event. Five car, Terry Labonte. Kellogg's car was the winner at Richmond just a week ago. He's trying to get back by Ricky Rudd. Now he does that as Sterling Marlin just dives to the inside and passes Rudd. Marlin moves to sixth place, Rudd back to seventh. There's the Kenny Schrader in the red 25. Joe Nemechek on the inside, 87. Jimmy Henson, the black car up on the outside, 32. Jeff Purvis is also there in the 44. Rick Mast in number one. And Jeff Burton in the eight car. There's see Burton trying to get on the inside of Mast. Can't make it, couldn't make the pass. Meanwhile, Purvis and Hensley are side by side. Purvis does take that spot away. Hensley's caught on the outside and loses a couple of positions. And now Jeff Burton moves alongside. Michael Waltrip is coming along in the yellow car right behind him. There also is Ricky Craven in car number 41. Now Mark Martin, who all the teams are saying has the fastest forward here today, is trying to go by Derek Cope. He's taking over the eighth spot. Right now he would be the second forward behind Ricky Rudd. And a whole pack of cars behind, including uh, Rusty Wallace and John Andretti. John Andretti's in 37. Brand new team in the Winston Cup Series this year. By Carl Haas and Michael Kranifus. Brad Leonard was Michael Kranifus last Friday night in Richmond. And he is truly enjoying this experience, he said. This is unbelievable. Well, he had a great job. He was the director of special vehicle operations for Ford Motor Company, but uh, gave it up to become a car owner. To become a car owner, said he's truly enjoying himself. No meetings, no paperwork. <laughs> saw Morgan Shepard go to the outside of Steve Grissom and pick up the position. There is John Andretti in the number 37 car. Dale Jarrett right on his heels. And there's the distance to the leader of the race, Dale Earnhardt. I'm impressed with Bobby Labonte. He has stayed within two, three car lengths. In fact, two tenths of a second are separating first and second. There's 1.4 seconds between Earnhardt and Gordon, and about a three and a half second interval back to fifth place, Daryl Waltrip. And we see in the graphic that Terry Labonte has been able to get by Daryl Waltrip. led all 29 laps of this event so far, but Bobby Labonte has kept up with him. Here come 28, Dale Jarrett, Texaco car trying to get by Andretti. Andretti drives in the corner. See, Dale Jarrett does want to go in there and lose the back end and have to catch it, come up and tag the 37. Coming off the corner, he pulls alongside of Andretti. In the middle of the back stretch, they are right dead even into the corner however and ready is able to maintain we see what happens and there we see a car on the inside that's the crash car the race car of the brand new joy earnhardt continues to lead over bobby labonte and we will be back after this message and a word from our abc stations
33 guys, 33 cars coming down pit road, guys. Looks like we might have an engine problem, flat tire or something. 33, Presley. Lynn put down 33. Okay. Here's the chassis. So? Yeah. Yeah. Show him and Earnhardt. Between himself and second place Labonte and Earnhardt, look how he has done it. Lap number 30, he was 1.4 seconds behind, and on the 33rd lap, he had closed that interval to six tenths of a second. And there you can see that he is now only about two car lengths behind second place Bobby Labonte. So Jeff Gordon at the moment, the man on the move. And we can see that he consistently is running faster laps than Dale Earnhardt. And that's exactly what they're looking for right now is consistency. Jerry Punch, what about Jeff Gordon? Well, he doesn't have the problem that the two cars in front of him have, and that is both Earnhardt and Bobby Labonte have complained to their crew chiefs that their cars are loose getting into the corner. Gordon's car, in fact, is, is quite a bit tighter. He has a bit of a push coming off, so Gordon actually can run his car on into the corner, throw the car to the turn, and that's one of the reasons he has narrowed the gap. Also, that's the reason Bobby Labonte hasn't tried to dive beneath Earnhardt. His car is already very, very loose. Back upstairs. And that's what they're trying to do. They're starting the race a little bit loose because they feel like as the day wears off, the cars will tighten up. And Mark Martin has passed Ricky Rudd. He now is the highest running Ford product. He's in seventh place. The first six cars are the new Chevrolet Monte Carlo. A couple of Fords here with Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd running seventh and eighth. As a matter of fact, let's see, the next five or six cars are Fords. Yeah, exactly, Benny, tracking that battle. We started with Fords, Chevys were six of the top ten, then three Fords and a Pontiac. Now better balance with six Chevys and four Fords. John Kernan has a report. John? Talking about the teams fighting a loose handling problem, we saw the 33 car of Robert Presley hit just a few laps ago. That was the reason. The car was so loose, he couldn't hardly drive it. They brought it in, put on four new tires, and made a chassis adjustment to try and tighten it up. Michael Waltrip, though, has been running pretty well. He has also complained of a loose condition. Presley is three laps down, running in 38th position, and doesn't appear to be handling much better than he was. There is Michael Waltrip, one of the drivers who had to take a provisional to get into the race. He started in 39th. He's currently running 23rd. And Michael told me this morning that his car was not as bad as it 
as qualifying would indicate. He said his car was pretty good, but both qualifying laps, he simply got the car sideways and could not complete a good run. Michael Waltrip is eighth in the point standings coming into this event. Derek Cope and Ken Schrader are doing battle out there for the 12th position. And Schrader has moved up nicely from uh, his 29th starting position. And there he comes on the inside of Schrader. I mean, the Gary Cope has Schrader on the inside. The red 25 as Morgan Shepard watches. Jeff Gordon just passed Bobby Labonte and took over second position. And now Gordon sets his sights on the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Has that Gordon been phenomenal this year? Well, he sure has. He's won two pole positions already this year, and this is how he got second from Labonte. Down in turn one, he simply gets a good run, drives down to the inside, and as Jerry Putt said, his car is tight enough that he's able to do that, drive the car in a little farther than Labonte and take the spot away. Now we'll see if he can close up on Dale Earnhardt. It looks like he is. <laughs> I would say so. There in the third turn, he closed in about two car lengths on Earnhardt. Everyone said in about 40 laps they would really like to stop and change tires. They wouldn't be able to because the gasoline, the tires are not worn out. They're just starting to slip and slide. Here's a field summary for you as you look for your favorite driver and where he is currently running in this race. Jeff Gordon had a good Daytona, a bad pit stop. One at Rockingham qualified for the pole at Richmond. And now is in second position here at Atlanta. And here is Derry Cope and Morgan Shepard still doing battle. And they're for 13th. 13th, and we see Steve Grissom, the Mikey car, pull up behind Morgan Shepard. And there's Bobby Hamilton and Richard Petty's car. Grissom. We look back on Steve Grissom, another one of those disappointing moments last week when Steve failed to qualify for an event. And because this is a brand new team, we're still working on 1994 points in terms of provisionals and so could not get in. There is Mark Martin, who is now moving up to sixth position. He passed the uh, four car of Sterling Marlin. Darren Walton is the next victim for Mark Martin. There he is. He's closing in rapidly, too. Cope and Shepard continue to do battle. Morgan drives the corner, backs off the gas. Let's start drift up now. Back on the gas. This is not a racetrack that you can uh, go flat out. No. Some of the guys almost did in qualifying. The Bush Grand National cars on Friday on, during qualifying on Thursday. Some of them did it back run wide open. But Mark Mark just passed Daryl Waltrip, taking over fifth position. So a Ford is on the move for Mark Martin. But how far does he got to go to catch Dale Earnhardt? There he goes to the start-finish line, and there, where? Someplace. <laughs> there he is in the middle of the backstretch. there someplace and Gordon has been able to come within about six car links or five but cannot move any closer so Dale Earnhardt continues to hang on to the lead as we have completed 49 out of 328 laps in the pure later 500 from Atlanta back in a moment Presley again. Morgan mm -hmm. was right on the outside this time. Yep. He's going to get him this time. Yeah, that one. I hate it when Mikey does that too. Tell <laughs> <laughs> hey, what. Am I doing interval on the six car if this thing keeps going? Looks like he might be faster than Earnhardt right now.
All right. All you right. got it. Put something under here. I can't see this thing. Well, I don't want to turn away from you. That's all right. But, uh, That's all right. That's all right. I'm looking down on it. No problem. at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Dale Earnhardt has led right from the first lap, but Jeff Gordon is beginning to run him down, also on the move. Mark Martin and Kenny Schrader. Mark Martin currently in fifth position, and Kenny Schrader is in 12. Mark Martin leading the Ford Charge at the moment. And Bob, he just might be as fast as Dale Earnhardt now. Jack Aroot has more. Well, Bob, this supposedly is going according to plan for the Mark Martin machine. They wanted to stay back until the first series of pit stops. I checked with Steve Hill. He said that his driver should come on the pit road in approximately five to six laps. No changes for Mark Martin. His only complaint on the radio is those darn Chevrolets. Meanwhile, Terry Labonte has a serious looseness. Look for them in their pit stop to add some wedge to the car. And pit stop should be occurring before too very long. There is Ken Schrader in car number 25. The yellow flag comes out for the third time this afternoon because of debris on the racetrack. And so we watch now the race to the caution flag. And here they come off the corner. Jeff Gordon will make no challenge. Earnhardt has the lead as we slow the pace down because of debris on the racetrack. Boy, oh boy, was this a great caution flag or yeah. what? Well timed. Well timed for all these guys who really wanted to get in and get some new tires on. New tires just have a certain feel to them. They stick to the racetrack so much better than worn tires, hot tires. Now they're telling the crews right now, all these drivers on the radio, radio on their crews and saying, look, we need to do this, we need to do that, trying to get their car as perfect as they can. Pit road should be open this coming uh, lap because the pace car already has the field in tow in the back stretch. There is debris in turn number three. That's the location of the debris that has caused this caution period. So we should be seeing the pit stops this time around. Now then, can Mark Martin and his crew make up some time in the pits? This is a great race, one of the best races all day long. One I truly enjoy is between all the pit crews up and down pit road. Seven guys across the wall trying to do it just a little faster than the next guy. They work so hard on their pit stops, just as the driver does during the uh, week between races. Let's see how the crews perform as the field comes down. Only three or four cars stay out on the racetrack. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, Dale Earnhardt will pit as we, they all will on the lead lap, and they will make no changes on the Goodrich Chevrolet. We are told even though the car's been a little bit loose, this track gets tighter as the day goes over. They're going to leave the car as is and just make a regular routine four-tire change. Likewise, the same. No changes at all for Jeff Gordon in the car number 24. Back up soon. We can see the triple split. The three car on top, the six car on the bottom, and 24 in the middle. Mark Martin's crew was finished on the right side for us. Let's see if he can. Yeah, oh, he's moving. Stop. But Earnhardt is seven. Both those cars are down towards turn one. And Mark will gain one spot. He got by the five car of Labonte as he left the pit. Picked up one spot. 
Earnhardt with a 19.1, but his car was uh, pitted way down toward turn number one, the first pit stall, and an 18.7 for the other two. Here's Jack Aroo. Well, Bob, if you don't think that these crews are competitive, when Mark Martin came in, they actually had a lookout checking down on the progress, first of Terry Labonte, and then further down towards turn number one, the Martin crew was checking in in the progress of Dale Earnhardt. As Martin pulled out. It looked as if he might be the first car out. They gave the high fives and they were ready, but it all went for naught when they got to the end of pit road. What about down your end, John? I'm all the way down on the end where Michael Waltrip has pitted in the first pit stall, number 42, as you come out of turn four. He has picked up 17 positions out on the racetrack. They had a pretty good stop here. Four tires. They also made a chassis adjustment. Michael had complained the car was a little bit loose, so they made a chassis adjustment to tighten the car up. But a nice move to the 21st position from the 39th starting position for Michael Waltrip. We're under our third caution of the day here in Atlanta for debris on the racetrack. ABC's live coverage continues in a moment. Okay. <clears throat> if Mark does do well, we really need to emphasize the 500 miles that Paul talked about Sprague and Collage. Yep. Of getting uh, robbed or anything, are we? No, <laughs> hey, we got enough of them out there, don't we? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> said last night at Charlotte it took him out of their handcuffs. Players and handcuffs. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I saw the Indianapolis ice play for the first time this year on local TV. They were playing at Lane. Atlanta coming up next here on ABC Sports. The auto racing action continues. 12 of the best racing stars, including, of course, Rusty Wallace, give a whole new meaning to the term Sunday driver. The legendary Daytona International Speedway is the site for round number one of the International Race of Champions. And let me tell you, it's a terrific race. That's next here on ABC Sports. Let's go pit side again. Here's Jerry Punch. Paul, let me show you a problem that may be potentially brewing here with some of the teams. This is the right front tire off Ricky Rudd's Ford. And take a look, the inside shoulder beginning to separate here. The tire beginning to blister. Some of the cord already showing now. Two things can cause this. Number one, if the air pressure is a little low and the tire actually is rolling on the shoulder, it'll begin to separate. That was the case here. But also, the car was just so tight, he was having to turn the tire in the corner, and it was ripping the tread away. Some of the other cars are also complaining a little bit tight this early on. So a lot of concern here in the Rudd pit. They Loosen the car up. That was the right front tire. Maybe four or five more laps, and Ricky would have bought some concrete. Thank you, Jerry. The green flag comes out. And it's still Dale Earnhardt up front, closely pursued by Jeff Gordon. Now, Mark Martin is fourth in line. Bobby Labonte ahead of him. Let's see if Mark Martin can gain another spot, as a lot of positions are being traded behind the leaders. There's Jeff Bodine to the inside of Ricky Rudd and Brett Bodine also there with Rusty Wallace. And for second, and three Bodine brothers nose to tail. 75, 7, and 11. Ed, look, Gordon trying to look on the inside of Earnhardt coming off turn four. Yeah, the start finish line. He had his nose to the inside of Earnhardt wanting the line. And now let's see if he has enough momentum build up in turn number two to make the pass down the backstretch. 
Gordon works to the inside of Earnhardt, and he passes him and takes the lead. Jeff Gordon becomes our second leader, but look at Earnhardt come back. You knew he was going up the hill, and you knew Earnhardt was coming back on the inside. Who will lead this lap? Is it Jeff Gordon? By inches. Now <laughs> <laughs> this. Jeff let Earnhardt go up the hill. You get under him. Oh, no, no, don't do this, guys. As the body goes by, as these fellas get picked up, he takes the lead. Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt touched in turn number one just enough to let Bobby Labonte, who was running third, dive below both of them and pick up the lead. And let's see if Labonte will have it at the line where the five Winston Cup points are awarded. Indeed, he will. As Mark Mark is in car camera, there he is, the sixth car, loudly Ford followed closely by Terry Labonte. Now watch this. Coming down the front straightaway, they will go in turn one, side by side. And watch as Earnhardt gets the car a little bit out of shape in one, and got to go up the hill. Gordon gives him room. But they touch. And oh, Bobby, man. You could just see Bobby Labonte sitting back there saying, these guys are going to do something that's going to allow me to take the lead. And indeed, that happened. The question now is, might there be slight damage to the 24 or the three car that uh, might come up later? I don't think the touch was that hard. I really don't. And we see Mark Martin has fallen back. Yes, indeed. Sterling, uh, Sterling Marlin has gone, gone to fifth. And, uh, and Terry Larkin back to sixth. Terry Labonte also is able to get by. So Mark's car is not handling as well as it was before the tire change. Looks like Rusty Wallace might be improving on his chassis during that last pit stop. And he looks like he's going to the front. He's back in eighth position. Now going to the inside of Rudd and picking up another spot. Moving him to seventh. There is Morgan Shepard. That's the camera on top of Morgan Shepard's car as he exits turn four. Harry Punch, what is the problem with Mark Martin? I'm sorry, Jack Arose, he's falling back in couple of positions. There is no problem. One of the situations that's developed with Mark Martin's car is it is not as quick on new tires as it is on old tires. Remember before the last pit stop how quick he came up in the last 15 or 20 laps in the pit window? Well, that's the case again. According to Steve Neal, he says, we've got to wait for the other cars to begin to push. Then we can go back towards the front. Right now, we're just coasting. Moving up, going to the inside now of Sterling uh, Marlin and passing him, picking up one of the positions he lost. But uh, that appears indeed to be the situation, Jack. Those tires just work better when they come in a little bit. And we saw the 10 car of Ricky Rudd a moment ago being passed by Rusty Wallace there. That was just simply Ricky Rudd. Billy Eagle told him about the right front tire. Right now, once again, he's trying to be as easy on those tires as he possibly can. There's Steve Meal looking on at his driver, Mark Martin. Jack Roush with the hat on, the owner of the team looking on also. And while they look onto the race, we will tell you that Jimmy Spencer is back in competition, but the 33 car of Robert Presley is behind the wall. There's the come inside the six car looking back. And you see that cable hanging down in the rear window? That's for the rear roof left. When they deploy, when they come up, that cable makes sure that they don't flip over. Just keep going, yeah. yeah. won twice at this racetrack, but never this race. Now Jeff Gordon goes to the inside of Bobby Labonte like he was standing still. Wow. And Le uh, Gordon comes back into the lead. Now let's see if Earnhardt can pick up second spot. Has Jeff led the race? I don't know that he has. He has now, that's for sure. Well, I think he led that one lap where he got it by just inches a few laps ago. There are your top four. Gordon, Labonte, Earnhardt, Labonte, Bobby, second, Terry, fourth. Jerry Punch can oh, no, update Jack. us from the pits. Well, we told you earlier, Dale Earnhardt's car was a little bit loose. You saw it firsthand a moment ago when he tried to go beneath Jeff Gordon. You wonder why wouldn't they tighten up Earnhardt's car? Well, the reason they won't is because of what I showed you a moment ago in Ricky Rudd's pit. If they tighten the car up in the rear, it puts more pressure on the right front tire, and that's 
what they're concerned about. Gilbert said, if we get any more buildup on our right front tire, we're going to rip the tread right off of us. Dale is going to have to drive a loose race car. Meanwhile, both crew chiefs in the 24 and 3 pits report that there was no damage, just their drivers had to take a moment too to catch their breaths back upstairs. Uh, I bet that's for sure. <laughs> There's the first four cars. Jeff Ward pulled away by three or four car lengths. Now, Sterling Marlin has been able to get back by Mark Martin. And Rusty Wallace has closed up. I talked to Rusty this morning, talking about loose and tight. He changed three springs this morning, trying to loosen his car because he is very concerned that his car will start pushing three of the four, four springs he changed this morning. Had a good race at uh, Richmond last weekend, but the handling went away in the closing laps. He finished third. And right now, Rusty Wallace is running in seventh position. 73 out of 328 laps are completed here at Atlanta, and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, he's 28th out of 30. When he gets lapped, that'd be a good time. Well, there's Greg Sachs. He's uh, running pretty good. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he started 24th up to about 13th. 15th, yeah. Be 13th right here if he makes this pass. Speedway and the Purolator 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race, which currently is being led by Jeff Gordon. And he has stretched out the advantage a little bit on second, third, and fourth. Bobby Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and Terry Labonte. And Mark Martin has repassed Sterling Marlin. <laughs> they have been going at it for the last 15 or so laps. Seems like every time I open my mouth, I talk about one of these fellows passing the other, but now it's Mark, and he's stretching, pulling away from Sterling Marlin. As Steve Neal, one of the guys in the pits reported, Steve Neal said after 15 laps or so, their car starts running as fast as the leaders, but it's just not as fast those first 15 laps. There's Michael Waltrip, who now finds himself in 17th position after the 39th place start. And right behind him is the 12th car of Derek Cope. Ashley just passed Cope for the 15th spot, 16th spot, I believe. Rick Mast is the number one car that uh, Michael's about to pass. Here's the leader, Jeff Gordon, and he is the only other driver besides Dale Earnhardt to lead every race 
point so far in 1995. And there you can tell just how much 1.3 seconds is. Jeff Gordon finished fourth in this race in 1993 and finished eighth last year. Now Earnhardt looks to the inside of Bobby Labonte in a bid for second spot. Nope, can't get the job done. As a matter of fact, this is the racetrack that Jeff Gordon made his Winston Cup debut. Mm -hmm. And he brought the team down. He practiced and ran a speed that was fast enough to sit on the pole. And as a matter of fact, he was expected to sit on the pole his first time here. Isn't that qualifying for about 20 or something? He just won. But has always run this racetrack very, very well. There are other drivers who made their first uh, Winston Cup start here also, including Steve Brisson, Rand McCoy, and Rusty Wallace, who back in 1980 finished second in a car owned by Roger Penske. John Kernan has an update on Robert Presley, who went behind the wall a few laps ago. Bob, it's not what we usually see when a car goes behind the wall. Normally we see an engine problem where they've been involved in a crash. Robert Presley has brought his Chevrolet into the garage simply because he couldn't drive it out on the racetrack. The car was so loose, the rear end wanted to come around on him every time he went into the turns. I talked to his crew chief, Charlie Presley. He says, John, we just missed the setup today. So they changed four springs, making other adjustments to the car. In fact, Charlie told me he should have called his sister this morning because she could have set the car up better than they did. <laughs> Well, we didn't need to call anybody to help set this car up because Ray Everham and Jeff Gordon is doing very well setting up this 24 car, the Devon car. And look, remember a few laps ago we showed how he closed the interval? Well, now we show him widening the interval between himself and second place. On lap 80 to lap 83, he lengthened out the interval between himself and second place, Bobby Labonte. There we see Greg Sachs in the 40 car and Dale Jarrett. Jarrett trying to take that spot away. Sachs is in front just a moment ago. Greg Sachs has had a good run today. Right now, that's for 12th and 13th. Sachs started 24th, I believe. Yep. He's had his problems in the first uh, three races of this year, but uh, looking good here today. They're trying to run down Morgan Shepard. That's Terry Labonte in the five and Bobby Labonte in the 18. Man, this could be confusing. <laughs> and we also might salute the Rick Hendrick team because uh, his cars have won the last two Winston Cup races. His three cars, Gordon, Labonte, and Sheva Schrader, are in the top ten at the moment. And there we see Terry Labonte trying to take Earnhardt. But he couldn't get make the pass so wisely he backed off. Now we see Dale Jarrett has called the 21 car. He's passing him as Labonte and Earnhardt are side by side that in point in turn three. Earnhardt continues to hold on to that third place, but Labonte now has a good run on the bottom of the racetrack and he takes third. Now, and Greg the, Sachs was able to get by Morgan Shepard as well. Yep. A few laps ago, we were watching uh, from the rear of Shepard's car, both Sachs and Jarrett, and now both of them are visible out the front of Morgan Shepard's car. That's not the picture you want to see. You want to see him out the back, not right. the front. Jeremy Mayfield. He's running 27th. By the way, there are 30 cars on the lead lap. Make that 26th. Mayfield has just picked up a position and is running in 26th by Jeff Burton. He's the best car directly in front of Jeremy. 
Gary Yarbrough's car. I saw Gary right. this morning. He looks as fit as ever. And there's Bill Elliott behind yes. Jeremy. He has struggled all weekend. And with more on Cale Yarbrough, the winningest driver here at this racetrack is Jack Aru. You remember that there were problems with mixed emotions when Cale Yarbrough hung up his helmet. Well, as you watch him run his team here, high atop their pit cart, he's brought his little boat chair with him, guys. And it looks as if I was kidding him about it and saying, it looks as if you're spending a Sunday down at the beach. He said, when you've been a racer all your life, coming to a racetrack is a Sunday at the beach. <laughs> Seven times, Cale Yarborough took the checkered flag here at Atlanta. That car down there on the inside of the racetrack, that's Robert Presley that we got a report on a few minutes ago. And here's another car moving into the inside of the racetrack, and that's Jimmy Hensley. Yes, down the front straight away as he went under our broadcast position. I heard the car blow, and we can see the steam and water coming out of the, exhaust, the rear of the car as he went down in turn one. Here is the leader, Jeff Gordon, continuing to set the pace. Look at the interval now between himself and wow. second place Bobby Labonte. And uh, he is indeed stretching it out. In third place now is Terry Labonte. And fourth is Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin runs fifth in the Purolator 500. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. You'll see why. Okay. So, uh, tonight, huh? Oh, good. How about Mark? Did he get Byron Hart? Just want to see if you were checking. Just want to see if you were checking. <laughs> Paying attention. Paying attention. That's it. NASCAR Winston Cup race at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, tonight on ABC starts with an hour of America's funniest home videos, followed by an all-new Lois and Clark. Then a network premiere on the Sunday night movie. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman star in Far and Away, all tonight on ABC. While we were in break, we had a couple of positions change. Now, Jeff Gordon continues to be the leader of this race, but Mark Martin picked up a spot. Well, let's see, past Dale Earnhardt going down in the first corner, and that is for the fourth spot. And you see he made the pass, and away he goes. And about the same time at another portion of the racetrack, we had a change of position for second as Terry came up on his brother Bobby. Came off the corner, got a great run off the corner alongside Bobby and takes a spot away. Uncontested. So Jeff Gordon now has the lead, but Terry Labonte is currently in second position. Never see him going by. Jeff Burton, that's the leader. Jeff Gordon passing Jeff Burton. And Burton is running 26, so there are now 25 cars on the lead lap at the 101 lap mark. And there is Gordon's teammate, 
Terry Labonte. Henry Carr is running first, second, and ninth. And Schrader is ninth. The third place car, Bobby Labonte. Now, the next car is a Ford. What about those Fords, huh? Mark Martin. Mark Martin is the highest running Ford. He is fourth. In the top ten, there are currently seven Chevys and three Fords, and Mark is the best among them. And Mark is gaining on the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. Now we see how far he's driven away from Dale Earnhardt. So Earnhardt's good red Chevrolet struggling right now. Sure is. Trying to find that right handle as Dave Marcus takes his rumpled car. He was involved in that multi-car crash out in the second turn early in the race. And so was Billy Standridge there in 47 that uh, Marcus was running along with. Now, Joe Nemechek in yep. 87 that Jeff Gordon just put a lap on. And uh, that means that there are 23 cars now on the lead lap as Nemechek is in 24th. Let's see how much of an interval there is between the leader and Dale Earnhardt, the pole sitter. There he is. Right the entire back straightaway. $15,200 bonus to Dale Earnhardt if he can win this race after having started from the pole. Now we're going to find out where Sterling Marlin is. There he is, the winner of the Daytona 500. And now seventh place, Ricky Rudd in car number 10. Let's see how far he is behind Sterling Marlin. There he is. Now the next car is the third Henry car, Ken Schrader. You can see the distance between he and Ricky Rudd. Again, Schrader started 25th and is currently 8th. There he is. Schrader thought he would win this race today. Well, it's not out of the realm of possibility. There is his serial. On the 53rd lap, he was in 11th, held there for a few, then moved up to 10th, held there for a few laps then picked up two to run now in eighth position. I tell you one thing, he better get his owner, Rick Hendrick, to talk to the 24 car and tell Jeff to slow down a little bit. <laughs> He's going to win this race. Gordon setting a rather furious pace here. And that's Kyle Petty. He has now put a lap on Kyle. Kyle was in 22nd position. 21 cars on the lead lap, and the next to go a lap down would be Steve Grissom. And there's Grissom right in front of Jeff Gordon. The black and yellow car is Grissom. And just ahead of Grissom is Lake Speed in the number nine machine. Here's Jerry Punch with a report on Jeff Gordon. Guys, the news just couldn't be any better out of the Jeff Gordon pitch. Now, they ran 58 laps on their first pit stop. All four tires came off, and there was essentially no wear at all on those tires. The air pressure filled up was minimal. The tire temperature was absolutely perfect. And to make matters worse for the competition, they're getting outstanding fuel mileage. In fact, they will run 67 laps on this fuel stop, according to Ray Evernam, and they will probably not come in until lap 125. That spells a lot of problems, possibly, for the competition. Bob? Awesome performance so far by Jeff Gordon. I sure hope some of those teams down there with the radios aren't monitoring ABC today because they will be dejected if they were. <laughs> but they are. He has led the most laps now total in 1995, Jeff Gordon has. Here we go with Daryl Waltrip, John Andretti, and Dale Jarrett. That's 10th, 11th, and 12th. Jarrett moving to the high side of Andretti as Andretti comes up and looks to the inside of Darrell Waltrip. Darrell Waltrip has a broken exhaust on his car. I saw it backfire up turn three just a moment ago. I hope that some of that gas doesn't get in there and affect Darrell. Rusty Wallace right in front of these guys. This is all a race for position. Yep, Rusty running ninth. As we watch this, I'll tell you, Steve Grissom has made a pit stop, changed tires. And he got a lap down, and not too long after that, came in for a pit stop. Walter closing in on him, Rusty Wild. Looks like Rusty is losing the handle just a little bit right now. 
Waltrip goes up wow. on the bank about every time down there in one and two. Darrell lost control there for a second. He's went a little bit higher. And watch again, he'll go high up here. Yep. But neither Andretti nor Jarrett can take advantage of his sliding up the racetrack. Now, Jarrett is going to try to go to the inside of Andretti. As we watch this, Jeff Gordon still our leader. Rig Mast goes by Morgan Shepard, take a spot away. That's the reality the race for 15th position. Morgan Shepard back to 16th. What do you think, Benny? Pit stops before too much longer? Be too long. Here we go. Andretti on the inside of Darrell Walters, the 17 car. Can he make the move? Now, he's a newcomer. He'll drive her down in there, but Darrell's going to give you some room. Yep. And Andretti takes that spot away. Here comes the 20, and Greg Sachs has joined in this race. Yeah, this is a good five-car battle here. And not too far behind all of this is Michael Waltrip. Jarrett moves to the inside now of Darrell Waltrip. And he, too, is trying to pass Darrell and does. So now 113 laps out of 328 have been completed here at Atlanta with Gordon leading Lamonti and Martin. Speed that up, I guess optical illusion. <laughs> As David used to say, optical delusion. <laughs> delusion. <laughs> Man, that cord is blind. saw his brother coming up on it, so he said, I got to go. I can't let him go by. Stops are beginning to happen here at Atlanta. You can see Dale Jarrett has already completed his pit stop and rolls back out on the racetrack as Dale Earnhardt comes to a stop. Mark Martin may be out of gas as he drops down off the banking and turn number three and heads for the pits. He was slow down the back right away. And look at the chassis adjustment on that three car, Jerry Budge. Indeed, Earnhardt has got a problem with the loose race car. They raised it, they bumped the spoiler up and made a significant chassis adjustment in the right rear. They were very concerned about the car being so loose. Let's check in with Jack Aroot, who's waiting on Mark Martin. Jack? Well, Mark Martin brings his car into pit road in what they call dead stick condition. The engine has run out of fuel. Now, a crew member reaches over the wall and begins to put in the ether. They try to refire the car. Thus far, they have not refired it. They're going to continue to change tires. They're anticipating making no major changes in terms of chassis adjustment. But you can see that now they're going to have to push the car off because he cannot fire. It tries to fire. It's two pit stalls down, three pit stalls down. They're beginning to lose. And Jerry, let's go down to you and Jeff Gordon's pit. 
You think there isn't team working on a racing? Well, the Hendrick Motorsports teams are working together. They brought Gordon in and told Terry Labonte, stay out because we want you to lead a lap. Here is the DuPont Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon in. It should be a routine pit stop. They plan no chassis adjustment, no air pressure change. They will clean the windshield, change all four tires, fill it up with fuel, and he will be down and away. Meanwhile, his teammate, Terry Labonte, gets to lead a lap and pick up five bonus points. Teamwork does exist here in NASCAR. Bobby Labonte is in the pit, so is Rusty Wallace. Let's go to Jackaroo in the five pits. Well, Jerry, those five points are very important, and now Team Hendrick goes to work on Terry Labonte's car. Checking with crew chief Gary Diard, they anticipate again making no major changes in terms of chassis. Checking the tires as they come off, they seem to be perfectly okay. The same could not be said for Dale Jarrett's car, number 28. When he came in, just as we saw on some of the other front runners in the first series of pit stops, he too had a blistered right front. 21.1 seconds for Team Hendricks, and Bill Elliott is coming on to pit road. Here's John Kernan. Elliott apparently out of gas. They have completed the work now. The crewmen are trying to push the car to get it to refire. They were making some major chassis adjustments. Also, they bumped the spoiler down as the car had been very, very tight. Bill Elliott at his hometown track not having a very good day as they finally get the engine fired. Elliott continues on his way. There have been good days, well, good Bill Jack Elliott, but not today. Jack? and the Haas organization go to work on John Andretti's car. Led by Tim Brewer, veteran crew chief with so many victories with Junior Johnson. They have stalled the engine on this car, number 37, having a little bit of a problem with the jack on the left side as well. Now they've taken on the, the fuel, and they're beginning to refire the car. He is off and away in 21.8. Here's Jerry Punch. John Andretti exiting the pits. Darrell Waltrip, after a great qualifying effort, brings the Western Auto Chevrolet down. And Pete Peterson and company will go to work on that call. DW looking to make possibly just a four-tire change. As yet, there has been no adjustment on the spoiler and no chassis difference whatsoever on his Chevrolet Monte Carlo. DW, three-time winner, has won twice here in the spring event. And now they will make a chassis adjustment in the right rear. Apparently, the car just a little bit too loose. As DW gets left side tires, lengthy stop now. The lug nuts are on. He is down and away. 22.1 second pit stop for Daryl Waltrip. The leader of the race is Kyle Petty, who stopped a little bit earlier. There he is. I wonder why all the guys were going by Kyle so fast. I understand that because he has worn tires in these other cars with the new tires. Here comes Jeff Gordon, though, coming up on Lake Speed and Kyle Petty. Talk about effort on pit road, Benny. You'll see nothing more outstanding than this. They're trying to get Mark Martin's car started, and the whole team gets behind the car and pushes, and look what happens when they finally get it to fire. It's great. They, they stumble over each other. They're all of them go off pit road. Steve Mill loved to tumble down pit road. He fell from third to 14th, though, in the serial scoring. There goes John Andretti, who has the new tires, along with Derry Cope. Kyle should be coming in for a pit stop before too much longer. Here he comes. He must have heard you, Bob. <laughs> John Kernan will be there to call this pit stop by Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty pulls in as Barry Dawson, his crew chief, looks on as his Pontiac crew goes to work. It'll be a four-tire change. Kyle barely satisfied with the way the car had been handled, but they will make a minor chassis adjustment on the left rear. They'll put a little wedge in, into the car to try and tighten it up, and he got it just a tad bit loose. Now the left side tire is going on so far fairly smooth. This stop chassis down 19 over 19 seconds for Kyle Petty. Very good pit stop by that team, and with all of the pit stops having been made, it is Jeff Gordon now resuming the lead of this event with Terry Labonte second, Bobby Labonte third, fourth is Dale Earnhardt, and fifth is Ricky Rudd. And we see Jeff Gordon going by Michael Waltrip, putting him a lap down. Michael is in 13th position, now only 12 cars on the lead lap. And Jack Root has information on how Mark Martin managed to run out of fuel. Well, Benny Parsons, I have a question for you. Have you ever been so focused in a race car that you don't hear what your crew chief is telling you on the radio? 
know that's what happened to Mark Martin. For three consecutive laps, Steve Meal radioed in, it's time to pit, it's time to pit. The car was running so good, Martin's focus was so intent on trying to go to the front, and he didn't hear it. He probably heard him, he just didn't understand that it was fuel that was the problem and not the fact that the other cars were pitting. In any case, it has cost Mark Martin dearly. He's now back in 12th position, and he is the last car on the lead lap with 129 laps completed. Jeff Gordon continues to lead here on a beautiful day at Atlanta Motor Speedway. ABC's coverage continues in a moment. Is, uh, miles, no, Mark is miles. Bernhardt's uh, about half a lap down. I'm looking at how close Mark is going a lap down. All right. Goodness, right now. Some beautiful surface there. Paul could help me on this. And see degree temperatures. Great beaches. <laughs> beautiful women. Great food. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see when you were there that guy that charges a dollar to spray the women with sun tan lotion? No. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> they have everything in it. It's got a little compressor and a paint can with tanning oil. <laughs> <laughs> I've applied for that position, but the waiting list is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Welcome back to ABC's live coverage of the Pure Later 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, it's this time of year, every year, we become insanely jealous of Paul Page, who will be on a plane in a few hours headed for Australia. And our coverage of the Australian IndyCar Grand Prix next Sunday at 4 o'clock. Page, you don't have to leave a week early to go cover this IndyCar race. Bob, it's What's a 19-hour trip. you got to get over there. you got to relax. But you gain you a day when you go over there. Bob, don't remind me. <laughs> Surfer's paradise, huh? What a place. I don't surf, I wave. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to the coverage next Sunday here on ABC. Here's a field summary for you as you check out uh, your favorite driver and where he is running in this 500-mile NASCAR race. Jeff Gordon has things all to himself. We have had six leaders and seven lead changes so far in this race. Three caution periods for a total of 15 laps. And the average speed of the race is 142.4 miles an hour. And Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race, is setting a pace of about 171 at the moment. We can see what Jeff Gordon is doing to the competition. Modine brothers, Jeff and Brett, three, and Mark Martin is going to lap down. And boy, did he get, uh, get cost him dearly when he ran out of fuel and the crew had trouble getting their car restarted and now Mark Martin goes a lap down. He was the head of the Ford Brigade for a while. This is a race for 10th place. Rusty Wallace has it. Greg Sachs wants it. And Sachs just might win. 
Boy, a good race for Greg Sachs. But they better hustle because Jeff Gortz is not too far behind them as Mark Martin is coming back in the pits. Yep, he got a lap down and immediately came in. Jack Arudy's coming towards him. Well, it's fairly obvious he has a right front, it looks like, that has gone down on the car, so they're going to have to make the change under green. That's precisely the case. They're going to take on fuel as well. This will take him out of sequence during green flag stops. In 9.2 seconds, he's away. Very quickly, Mark Martin down pit road, although keeping it under the speed limit. Gaining speed now as he enters the apron of the track, and Jeff Bodine gets service completed on his car. And Jeff Bodine is having a terrible, terrible day. Right now, he's six laps down. Being shown in 33rd position. He's had a couple of unscheduled pit stops to change some tires. And Mark Martin, an unscheduled stop of his, did in fact lose another lap to the leader, Jeff Gordon. There we see Rusty Watson. Right behind Rusty yep. is Jeff Gordon. So Rusty and uh, Greg Sachs both stand to go a lap down. You know, everyone back in the winter was talking about how hard that Ray Everham and the entire DuPont crew was working. You know, back around Christmas, they were talking about them working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And it was said, why are they working so hard? Now, we yeah. know why they're working so hard. And their hard work has paid off. He has his seven and a half second lead on second place, Terry Labonte, and almost a little over 20 second lead on the fifth place car. So Jeff Gordon is indeed making a shambles of this race. But there are battles out there on the racetrack, and here's one of them. Ken Schrader and Dale Jarrett. This is the race for seventh place. And the 21 car also in the mix, Morgan Shepard. That's seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. The 40 car is tenth. All they got to do is look in the rearview mirror and they will see something that they don't want to see. Exactly. <laughs> the leader of the race. Robert Yates' team with Ernie Irvin behind the wheel won this race last year. Now Dale Jarrett is in command of that car while Ernie Irvin continues to recuperate from the injury suffered at Michigan last year. Jeff Bodine, meanwhile, comes back in. John? He was in the first time because he felt the vibration, and they found out the right front tire was a little bit low. They put four new tires on and went back out, and the vibration continued. So Bodine decided to pull it into the pits. As you look out on the racetrack, Jeff Gordon trying to put a lap on Rusty Wallace. Paul Andrews and the crew looking over Jeff Bodine's car. Remember last fall, Jeff Bodine ran really well here. They had a similar problem to this, feeling the vibration. They finally found the problem in the front suspension. Right now, Paul Andrews, Danny Glad, and the rest of the crew checking under the, under the car to see exactly what the problem might be, but they still haven't found it. And with Jeff Gordon putting a lap on Rusty Wallace, we now have nine cars on the lead lap. And Benny, I think if you were to take a poll in the garage area before this race started, most people would have said, yep, it's going to be a runaway in this event today, but they would have said Earnhardt was going to run away with it and not Jeff Gordon. Well, I think that's true, although most of it did say that the 24 car was running awfully well. <laughs> Understatement. Yes, he is. <laughs> Earnhardt, meanwhile, continues to run in fourth position behind the two Labonis, Terry and Bobby. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt is trying to hold on to fourth position, but Sterling Marlin is right behind. Looks almost like the Daytona 500 are reversed. Well, all five of the top positions here are held by Chevrolet, and they have seven of the top ten positions at this point in the event. Only three boards in the top ten. And if you folks have heard the four car go by on some of our audio, you'll notice that the, he doesn't have that strange sound he had in Daytona. They call the conventional exhaust system this week on the four car.
It had almost an IndyCar sound at it, Daytona, but now it sounds more like a conventional stock car. Joe, you heard him go by, and just like everyone else. He had the headers, what, about 140 degrees on that uh, four car? Whatever that means. Yeah, it made it sound different. That's all I know. <laughs> can close in on Earnhardt in the corners, but Dale seems to be able to hold his own on the straightaways. On oh, a crash off the second corner, heavy, heavy crash. Jeremy Mayfield has made some heavy contact with the front of his car. There's the in-car camera, which... Uh, oh, and some more cars in the crash, several other cars in the crash. Like Jeff Purvis is involved. Michael Waltrip also involved. Mayfield was making his way slowly down the backstretch when cars crashed behind him. Well, I think that they were trying to race the leader back to the caution flag and might have, well, I won't speculate. Yeah, I, did, I was watching I the monitor. Maybe we will have a replay here to show us what happened, but I did not see exactly what occurred back there. In any case, there is heavy damage to the 98 car of Jeremy Mayfield. This is the Cale Yarborough car. You can see some yellow sheet metal up on the racetrack. That's from Michael Waltrip's car, who was also involved. That's from the in-car camera on Jeremy Mayfield looking down the back stretch. As the safety vehicles arrive at the car. Jeff Purvis was involved. He apparently is okay. He has the helmet off and the window netting down and looks like he'll be climbing out of the car. There he is. So Purvis is okay. Let's hope that Jeremy Mayfield is. We'll show you the start of the crash from the speed shot. It may be a little difficult to see, but up in turn number two is where the accident occurs. Jeremy gets the car a little bit sideways. He corrects and comes back and hits the wall head on. And there we'll see Mark Martin go by. Watch as Mark and the 75 car go by. They slow. Now both those cars were able to go by. Now Jeremy Mayfield is going down the straightaway and all of a sudden, for some reason, the car goes back across the racetrack right in front oh. of Michael and the 44 car. It's like he knocked off the steering linkage in the car and could not steer it. Watch it just go straight across the racetrack. He took a heavy shot in the back end of the car. However, we are glad to report that Mayfield is out of the car and walking around. Here it is from another angle. There is both Waltrip and Purvis plowing into Mayfield's car and lifting it off the ground. And we can see all the damage to the Pennzoil Pontiac and to the right rear of Mayfield's car. There's uh, what's right left rear. of the back end. Yeah. Man. No fire, though, from the car. And again, Mayfield is out walking around. We have not seen Michael Waltrip. We know that Purvis is okay. And meanwhile, here comes those on the lead lap down to the pits. Here's Jack Aroo. Well, no changes out of the second place car, Terry Labonte. Gary Dehart says the bi biggest difference between he and his teammate, Jeff Gordon, who was running out front, is the fact that the leader can pick through traffic a little bit easier. Let's check in with Jerry Bunch. They have already changed right side tires on Jeff Gordon's car. No change, no chassis adjustment, no air pressure adjustment. He is down and away. And likewise, just behind him, here's Tommy Labonte trying to beat Terry Labonte out of the pit road as Dale Earnhardt Still get some work done on his Goodrich Chevrolet. They were going to take some wedge out. His car had gotten a little bit too tight during that last run. Bob? Doesn't surprise me because they really cranked on that three car during the last pit stop, Benny, more than I think I've ever seen them do on, on that team. That's it's been a car. long time since radial tires. It's been three or four years since I've seen that huge of an adjustment on a car. You're right, Bob, during a car, uh, pit stop. Jeremy Mayfield's car being hauled away on the uh, rollback. Just look at the damage to that car. The in-car camera, though, still works. <laughs> yeah. And that you can see that they can't get the car all the way back on the record. Here's a replay from the uh, in-car. <laughs> 
He comes off the corner, and we can see the car starting to get sideways. When he corrects it, it comes back and goes head on in the wall. And the hood almost leaves. And he's going back across the racetrack. Now, the cars want to get going straight. And here, for some reason, which I don't really know why, it goes back across the racetrack. And I wish we had some in-car sound because you would hear a huge crash about right now. No, too that soon. was that was uh, Todd Bodine going by. Several others going by. It's just about to happen here. Darrell Walter went by. There's one. Yeah, there it was. Walter and Purvis both plowing into the back of Jeremy Mayfield. But he's okay, and the leaders have completed their pit stops. Now others do. We'll take a break right here from our live coverage of the Purolator 500. Is Michael okay? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Is Michael okay? That we sure. Fifteen car spun too, Bill. Okay. Thank you, Mikey. <clears throat> yes, sir. this segment yeah good have a nice time <laughs> we'll let the in-car camera sound play now yeah. right let the in-car camera sound play later 500 our fourth caution of the day they ran nearly a hundred laps of green flag and then Jeremy Mayfield Mayfield got in trouble the good news is that all of the drivers involved in the crash were able to walk away and go to the infield care center now we've got a number of views that we can use we'll begin with Mark Martin's car as, and listen as Mark comes off the corner and sees a 98 car crash really sure where he was going for a while. Now here's Mayfield. And listen, we do have some car sound. Listen. Unbelievable. Michael Waltrip out of his car. John Kernan. And Michael's already been checked out. Michael's okay. Michael, what a wild ride out there. Yeah, I come off turn two and uh, was racing a guy and, and looked in the mirror to check on him and uh, uh, didn't realize Jeremy had wrecked and uh, nobody said anything and I just pulled out, uh, saw smoke and pulled out to see what it, you know, to get a look up ahead and, and there he said, I mean, uh, just couldn't even, never saw him until I hit him for all the smoke. Uh, tell mom and dad and everybody back in Owensboro, hi Scott, Mercer, I hope you're getting better. 
just a sad day. If you want to know a bad weekend, this is it. We had to use a spot to get in the race. We crashed our car. Yesterday, we're leading a bush race, and a radiator falls out on the ground. So uh, I'm sure there's better days ahead for me, but uh, I just soon forget this one. It's Michael Walter, Bob. Well, there'd almost have to be better games for you after that one. So we are under caution once again, 155 laps complete. Force of habit, I guess. Yeah. Michael laugh and be so comical at times like that. Yeah, under those conditions. All right. Really? Mm -hmm. That's where Mike... Uh, Landed up, I think. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. You can bet Rusty's going to try to get a lap back here, huh? Okay. Doesn't look good right now, does it? <laughs> gone green once again from our caution period and Jeff Gordon continues to lead this race Rusty Wallace tried desperately when the green flag came out to get a lap back he was positioned right alongside Jeff Gordon for the restart but as you can see he was unable to do so and so Rusty Wallace continues to be a lap down in 10th position here's John Kernan with Jeremy Mayfield once again, glad to report all the drivers involved in that last incident okay, including Jeremy Mayfield, who took a very hard lick into the wall coming out of the turn two. Yeah, really unfortunate you know, for Mike and all those guys. I hate to see it. Something, we just broke loose on our car, and I got loose and hit the wall, and then uh, Michael come along and hit us, and I just hate it for all of them. I just want to tell my mom I'm all right. I feel good. Did you cut down the tire, or do you know what happened? I don't know. We had uh, something wrong with the shock or something, like the uh, right front shock was broke or bent or something. We were just going to try to ride it out. And, Evidently, it broke loose, and the car broke loose on me, and we spun. Jeremy Mayfield, glad to is okay. That's for sure. All three drivers involved, Michael Waltrip, Jeremy Mayfield, and Jeff Purvis, are okay. We're focused now on the battle for third position. Remember, Rusty Wallace in the two car is a lap down. Bobby Labonte in number 18 is in third at the moment. Dale Earnhardt is right behind him, trying to take over third spot. Jerry Labonte is our second-place car, and Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race as Bobby Labonte goes by Rusty, and here comes Earnhardt. That's the picture we're all so familiar with. Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace racing. Right now, it's not for position. Normally, they're on the same lap and contesting positions, but not so here today. And uh, also, the 17 car of Darrell Walter, which we catch a glimpse of, uh, glimpse of once in a while, is also a lap down. Sterling Marlin there in the four car. He is fifth. But the two and the 17, since they are a lap down, are battling for position. They're battling for 10th. Both those cars, 21, Morgan Shepard, and the 10 of Ricky Rudd are in the lead lap. Morgan is in 7th, and Ricky Rudd in 8th. Our ninth place car is Dale Jarrett in the 28th. 
on the lead lap, and there he is behind uh, Dick Trickle. And ahead of Ted Musgrave. Camera on the roof of the 15 car, Dick Trickle. It's Derry Cope just ahead. Position. And there's a 28 car that I was talking about that is in fact on the lead lap. Nice place. Well, it's just about 3 o'clock Eastern time and seems like a good time for uh, Paul to run down what's happened so far in the Purelator 500. Paul? Well, Bob, we've just crossed the halfway point in this race. Right now, it is, of course, Jeff Gordon, the leader. He has been dominant through the early part of this race with seven lead changes. And we've had four caution flags accounting for 22 laps, and that, of course, is keeping the average speed down. Lap lead, well, Jeff Gordon, of course, has that, followed by Earnhardt, who was the pole sitter and led in the early going. Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte, Darrell Waltrip, all picking up some time at the lead of the field, as well as Kyle Petty. This race actually began with a yellow. Mike Wallace got into the wall uh, right on the green flag being pushed from behind as we look at the cars officially out of the race now. They came back to green flag on the seventh lap, and it was only about five laps later that Steve Kinzer and Brett Bodine got together, and that took several cars down to the infield, though most got restarted and back into competition. Then on the 56th lap, at an ideal time for a caution period once again because of debris, and everybody headed for the pits. Mark Martin on that stop, driving the Ford, of course, moved up one position and was with the leaders of the race. But then on lap 63, Jeff Gordon took back over. And he has been the dominant power ever since then until this caution, the fourth of the day, on the 149th lap when Jeremy Mayfield got into the wall. So that brings us to the current situation on lap 167 with, out question, Jeff Gordon is the man to watch here. And the battle between the Fords and Chevrolet is currently being dominated by Chevrolet. Right now on top of a four driven by Mark Martin, who has lost two laps now and is back in 20th position. Yes, Mark Martin ran out of fuel on his first. And look at the three abreast coming off the corner. Darren Waltrip trying to get on the inside of Mark. And remember, the 17 and the two, Waltrip and, and uh, Wallace, are battling for position. They're both a lap down, battling for position. As a matter of fact, both those cars are a lap in front of Mark Martin. This is battle for six. Yep. The Ken Schrader has it, and uh, right behind him is Morgan Shepard. Schrader goes in the corner, lets the car drift up just a tick, and Morgan tries to get on the inside, just can't do it. So right in front of them is Darrell Walton and Rusty Wallace. We see Mark Martin's been able to get by Rusty. Battling for 10th spot. Waltrip and Wallace. Here comes Schrader. As these guys go in the third corner, later in the day, that might be a problem. As the sun starts to set, it will set down in turn three in these driver's eyes. Here's Jerry Punch with a report from Pittsburgh. Well, Benny, you're reading the minds of some of these drivers down here. We're halfway through, and the glare is becoming somewhat of a problem in turn three, so much so that NASCAR has now come to the lead pitch, the Jeff Gordon pitch, and is moving up and down pit road, telling the crew chiefs you can now begin to put tape on the outside of the windshield only, the outside to help with the glare problem entering turn three. They have to be given permission to do that, otherwise it is a penalty, but now they are allowed to put tape on the windshield to try to fight that glare entering turn three. Bob? All right, and a back for position on the racetrack between Rudd and Schrader. And this would be for sixth position. Morgan Jefford was able to get by Schrader. He's now in the... He's sixth. This is a battle for seven. Yeah. yeah. And now we see Terry Labonte beginning to close in on Jeff Gordon for the lead. That's the closest anybody's been to Jeff yes, Gordon all is. day. It's still a few car lakes, but Terry Labonte may be making a race out of this. 
We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You can just keep that and use it again, Lynn. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> saw the 90 car out there I mean to go I thought yeah I think he's still out yeah, there they're showing him out 16 laps down all the people in the stand is everybody in the stands monitoring is ABC that, um, is that Chris Schenkel okay is he still doing this is there anybody down there monitoring ABC Look up here at the booth and wave if you're monitoring ABC. The professional bowlers tour. I can't believe that. Yeah. How come you folks don't listen to ABC? What's the matter with us? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Yep. Bowling first. Okay. Okay. with more live coverage of the Pure Later 500 from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Next Saturday at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, the professional bowlers tour lights up the lanes on Long Island at the Bud Light Championship. And then ABC's Wide World of Sports travels to Romania. A legendary gymnast goes back to her homeland for a reunion with her family and a special performance. Nadia Comaneci returns to Romania Saturday here on ABC Sports. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the Pure Later 500 with 178 laps completed. The number five car of Terry Labonte is running in second. Here is Darrell Waltrip, who was running 11th a lap down, but he's off the pace, Benny. Slow going in turn three. If he heads for the pits, that means he's got a flat tire. If he keeps going, he's got an engine problem. Jerry, what is it? Well, Darrell Waltrip was very curt and very to the point a moment ago as he was running at 11th spot on the race. He said it just blew up. Obviously very dejected, but he will try to bring the car down. But there are very long faces out here in the Western Auto Pits, Bob. Tough break for Darrell Waltrip, who started this race in fourth position, has won three times here at this racetrack. You're looking at a field summary, an app of field summary, showing you where everybody is running at this moment. And Mike Wallace, by the way, the car involved in the accident, just as the green flag came out, is 169 laps behind, but he's out on the racetrack. Well, actually, he's in the pits yeah, right now. He has been on the track, but he's in the pits at the moment. There we see Jeff Gordon in the familiar position. There we see the 90 car on pit road. We'll have a few minutes to get that car repaired, or NASCAR will ask you to get it back in the garage area. There's the interval between first and second as Terry Labonte chases Jeff Gordon. Terry's brother Bobby running back in third position. Both of these drivers have all 
already won a race in 1995. They look to be the favorites to uh, record a second one, possibly to become the first two-time winner in 1995. Look at this. Jeff has a 1.3 second lead on Terry and 3.1 on Bobby and 6.3 and 7.3 on Earnhardt and Marlin running back in fourth and fifth. And everyone thought that Dale Earnhardt would be the car to beat today. Except for the very early going, Benny, he really hasn't been much of a threat, but the race isn't over yet. And we saw about 100 laps ago when he made that pit stop, the huge chassis adjustment. There's the third place car bottom line. Now we'll go back to Dale Earnhardt in fourth. And we see Mark Martin has been able to pass both he and Sterling Marlin, but once again, Mark is a couple of laps down in 20th spot. Fourth and fifth there, Earnhardt and Sterling Marlin. Now here is Morgan Shepard running in sixth position, and John Kernan has a report on this car. Well, it appears that the Ford's host may be pinned on the Wood Brothers right now. They're the front-running Thunderbird in the sixth position, and they are the all-time leaders for victories here in Atlanta with nine. Now, I was talking to Eddie Wood just a moment ago. They've been making major adjustments on the car. It seems to be helping the cars running better and better, but that wasn't what he was really excited about. It looks like Jeff Burton, though, has blown an engine out on the track and uh, should be headed back in. But getting back to Eddie Wood, he said he wasn't really excited that the car was running better. He was excited because they had passed a Chevy. He said, hey, we even passed two Chevys out there. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Jeff Burton was running in 25th position two laps down, but has fallen off the pace as we documented. There is Morgan Shepard. We'll continue our movement back and show you those on the lead lap. Here is the seventh place car of Ricky Rudd. And Darren Walker, we saw him slow a moment ago. He did make a pit stop. He's now back on the racetrack. And the eight car we saw smoking just a moment ago, he still is on the racetrack. He did come in. There's a good battle between Schrader and Dale Jarrett. Both these cars in the lead lap, and Dale Jarrett is in ninth place, the last car on the lead lap. Yep, this is the battle for eighth position between Schrader and Dale Jarrett. So we've shown you all nine cars now that are on the lead lap. Running in 10, the lap down is Rusty Wallace. The 11th position is being held by Dick Trickle, who is also a lap down. Now we have a battle for the fourth position as Marlin goes to the inside of Dale Earnhardt and passes him, picks up fourth. Tell you what, Dale Earnhardt's not going to sit on the pole anymore. He qualifies first. You know, this year he's been qualified at Rockingham and, and Richmond. He qualified back in the 20s and ran up front all day long. Here he qualifies on the pole, and Jeff Gordon's the fastest car, so Earnhardt needs to change his strategy and go back to qualifying about 25th. You know, the last time Dale Earnhardt uh, sat in the front position, he won the race. That was in 1990, but he didn't earn that starting position. Time trials were rained out that year, and he started because of points. The last driver to win from the pole position was Buddy Baker in 1979. Dale Jarrett's just for Handling just a little bit better as the day goes on. Trying to get alongside of, there's Ernie Irvin. He was the honorary starter of the race, waved the green flag twice, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and his car, being driven by Dale Jarrett, now is looking to pick up a spot from Ken Schrader. And he does make the pass. Yep. car of Jeff Burton is on pit road with its hood up as they work on it. John, what are they doing? Bob, they're having a problem. Uh, the, the motor, I said just a few moments ago, it looked like he had blown up. Well, apparently they've got a problem with the uh, with one of the oil lines or the oil tank around that area. Back in the oil tank behind the driver's seat, a lot of smoke coming out of there. So it looks like they're going to change some lines also underneath the, the hood. There was a lot of smoke from the header pipes when he pulled in, but now that has dissipated. So apparently he was leaking some oil from the car somewhere along the line. Continues to lose laps and lose positions. Now back to a 28 spot, six laps down. Jeff Gordon passes the 77 car driven by Davy Jones. And 
we see that Gordon is stretching out the interval once again, Benny. Yes, what it was, I think it was 3.4, 1.3, I'm sorry, the last time we saw the interval now is 3.4, so he's gained a couple of seconds on Terry Labonte. And again, running very consistent laps, they only vary three-tenths of a second. Now going to the outside and putting another lap on Kyle Petty. Kyle is now two laps down in 18. Jerry is down in the Rick Hendrick pits. Boy, what a great day they're having, Jerry. Exactly, Bob. If it isn't tough enough to be a car owner for one car, wants to come. How about the guy behind me, Rick Hendrick, who owns three cars, all three in the top nine. In fact, our leader, Jeff Gordon, second place car, Terry Labonte, and ninth place car, Kenny Schrader. Let's find out what's going through Hendrick's mind here. Rick, part of second. Hey, you got two cars running one and two. Now, what goes through your mind when you see Terry Labonte beginning to move in a little bit on Jeff Gordon? You know, I want to see him race, Jerry, but. Uh... You don't want to see anything happen at Martinsville. We were running one, two. It took them two of them out. So uh, just want them to run hard and stay apart. I don't even, don't, don't make a difference who's in front of each other. Just uh, don't want any friction between the two cars. In the interest of fairness, now you've got three drivers. Now, Gordon won at Rockingham. Labonte won at Richmond. This should be Schrader's turn by all rights. Kenny, Kenny's running a good race today. Darlington is really his track. Uh, you know, it's a long ways to go today, but he ought to be really tough at Darlington. He's due. We want to see him win a race. Rick, we understand the five car may be slowing slightly. Have you heard anything on your radios? Car's just a little bit loose right now. So, uh, you know, he's still got a pretty comfortable lead on third. So we're just kind of riding right now. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Let's go to Jackaroo. Jack? Well, Jerry, as you were talking to the car owner, the driver, Terry Labonte, radioed into the Hendrick chief mechanic, Gary Dehart, that the car is beginning to get very, very loose. Rather than get the friction that Hendrick was talking about, he's backed off the throttle just a bit. But still runs second. Hendrick Carr is running first, second, and ninth. There is Terry Labonte, who is second to Jeff Gordon, who continues to lead the Pure Leader 500 live from Atlanta Motor Speedway. <sighs> what are we, about 10 laps from a stop? I don't know. Another my guess. set of pit stops. Yeah. Notice that this comes up about 30 laps into a tire run. See if it does it again. What does? Okay, thank you. Lap speeds. Oh, yeah? I'll keep track of it. I'll let you know if it does. Okay. So what else we got here? Early going, they were down at 162. The car is lighting up. They're really tense. Yes, I sure did, Neil. Good oil for longer engine life. Yep. Driver makes a pit stop. We well, opposite. Poor Mark Martin is flying. Is he? Yeah. <clears throat> Not helping though, is it? No. See how much he's gained on the 18 he's. Yeah. I mean, but still two laps down. Yep. All the rest of the four drivers are saying, Mark, slow down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hundred and ninety a hundred and twenty-eight laps to go. Look at look at are brought to you by Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. Driver makes a pit stop. We often see a crewman go across the wall. This fella, 
put an extension through the rear window, has a ratchet on top, turns a bolt that sits on top of the left rear spring, changing the chassis. There's also a bolt on the right rear where they can change. Now there's a third. There the extension goes through the ratchet, a piece that goes up and down, adjusting the rear panhard bar. There it is. As the bar goes upward, it loosens the car. As it goes down on the right side, it tightens the car up. You can, and you Benny, can loosen both sides of those things and move the bar up and down significantly, but that's just a slight adjustment they can make. And here's a car that needs a chassis adjustment, Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte needs one desperately because Martin Martin just blew by him. Mark a couple laps down, but is running very fast. He blew by Terry Labonte and just drove off. Now give me in layman's terms here in the next uh, 15 seconds about the pan hard bar as we watch Rudd and uh, Jared battle for uh, seven. It's a bar that keeps the body located with the rear wheel. And as you move the bar up and down, it changes the rear roll center. As you move the bar up, as I said, it loosens the car down, it tightens it up. Race for position. Yep. All three of those cars in the lead lap. Jarrett earlier passed Schrader, now comes up to pass Ricky Rudd. That's seventh, eighth, and ninth. Looks like that we have had in the last few minutes a uh, cloud cover come overhead to. Uh, to kind of cool things off here. It isn't a warm day by any means, a very comfortable day, but still we don't have the sunshine that we had. Uh, and that will change these chassis. Yep. All right, let's show you another Napa field summary here as we show you where everybody is running. Labonte's are second and third, and Dale Earnhardt, the pole sitter, running in fifth spot. You can see nine cars on the lead lap. Now here comes Schrader back to challenge her, uh, Jarrett. Tries to get inside. Jarrett can't make the move. And all these fellows have had some kind of problem with the other. Greg Saxon ran so well. Took his car to the garage area. Kinsler and Parsons both in that crash down in turn one early in the race. Now, Schrader's going to try it on the outside. Yep. May have more luck up there. Let's see. Off the fourth corner onto the straightaway. Yes, Schrader got him. Meanwhile, Earnhardt is going back by Sterling Marlin coming off the second corner. Takes over fourth place. But don't count Earnhardt out just yet. No, he's up to fourth, but uh, we've got a long way to go. 121 laps to be exact. Dale Earnhardt is the only driver so far in the NASCAR Winston Cup season to finish in the top five in all three previous races. Now, he and Mark Martin, the only two drivers to have top ten finishes in all the events, but Martin is well off the pace, as we have documented currently in 16. Earnhardt's victories here in the Purolator 500 came in 90, in 88, and in 80. And he won the fall race in 84, 86, and 89, a six-time winner. But Earnhardt at the moment is 12.6 seconds behind Jeff Gordon. And that is a half lap. Hamilton and Kyle Petty being passed by Earnhardt and Sterling Marlin. There's Terry Labonte holding on to second position despite his handling problems. There we can see Labonte is he, Terry Labonte is he actually second corner now. There's the other Labonte, Bobby. And that's just how close they are. Bobby slowly been catching his older brother. Just a great day for Bobby Labonte today, who started second and has been in about the top three all afternoon. He has led part of the race. I don't think he has fallen lower than third, except during pit stops. Now we are seeing scheduled pit stops begin. Here is Mark Martin coming down. Jeff, uh, Steve Grissom uh, just completed a pit stop. He pulls out of the pits as Martin stops. And the number one car, Rick Mast, is also in for scheduled pit stop. He just changed four tires. He's about out in the way. 
And Mark Martin certainly, certainly doesn't want to run out of fuel as he did earlier and lose all that time. Coming down are Joe Nemechek and Bill Elliott. These are cars that are not on the lead lap. Focusing in on Bill Elliott, a five-time winner here at this racetrack and a two-time winner of this event. And Rudd is slowing down. Could he be out of fuel? We hard to know. say. It's hard to say. But he's coming in. He's down off the banking. Moving down pit road. We've seen cars today run out of fuel. As Elliott and both Nemechek leave, here comes Rudd. His pit is down toward turn number one. And he finally makes it there. Here's Jerry Punch with Ricky Rudd. Remember we showed you the right front tire early this afternoon on Ricky Rudd's car that came off that was nearly separated. Well, Ricky Rudd apparently cut a right front tire, and that's why he slowed. He was going to pit in two laps anyway, but it cost him some valuable time getting in the pits. They meanwhile have changed all four tires. He is away. Let's go to Jack Aroon. Well, Jerry, a big chassis adjustment being made. About a half turn on car number 28, Dale Jarrett. In the interim, your second place car that has a serious chassis problems being loose. He's on pit road, Terry Labonte. Now, Mike Slattery has brought that ratchet that Benny Parsons was talking about, has stuck it in the back, and now he's making one full, two, actually a, a turn and a half. Let's check in in Dale Earnhardt's pit. Right side tires already going on Earnhardt's car. Once again, they are going to try to take some wedge out. Earnhardt said the car is getting tighter and tighter and harder to turn coming off the corner. Left side tires are on, and he is down and away as Terry Labonte now comes down pit or Bobby Labonte, I should say, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. And likewise, they will put a little bit of tape on the windshield. They're cleaning the windshield right now, changing right side tires. They bump the spoiler just slightly. And problem the contact as Dick Trickle has run over a tire on the road. The right side tire has come off, Benny. Left side. The left front tire is off Dick Trickle's car. He's sitting there in pit road, and they have trouble with the right rear on Bobby Labonte's car as Rusty Wallace drives away. Come on, help me lift the car up, he's saying. The jack man is telling everybody, come out here, let's lift, let's lift this car up and try to get the jack under the car. Now the DuPont crew, Ray Everham, is in, get this car out of here. I want to pit. Here my car comes right now. Move. But here comes Jeff Gordon. He's going to be pitting right beside it, Jerry. And actually, NASCAR would allow some adjustment because of the car in the middle of pit road. Ray Everham felt helpless because he could not get the Dick Trickle forward to move. Meanwhile, they have already changed the right side tire on the car number 24. Left side tires go up. They clean the windshield. They spray the windshield. It's full of fuel as Gordon's picked up and completed. And Dick Trickle's car still sits in the middle of pit road. And now they borrow an air wrench from the Gordon crew to try to put a tire on the left front. As Kenny Schrader is in the Pit. On the left side tires of Kenny Schrader's Monte Carlo. Schrader work is completed down in the way. No adjustments. Morgan Shepard, the leading Ford Thunderbird, who had been running in six before this sequence of pit stops started, pulls in. Lynn, Eddie Wood go to work along with the rest of the crew. It'll be a four tire change. They'll also, Benny Parsons talking about the Panar bar. They will make an adjustment but with that. Go up at least a round on that. Trying to loosen the car up as you see Lynn Wood also making the chassis adjustment there in that right rear. Morgan Shepard gunning the engine. It looks like a pretty good pit stop. 18 and a half seconds as Morgan Shepard is down and away. Among the better pit stops that we saw during that sequence from the Morgan Shepard crew. And out on the racetrack, it is still Jeff Gordon's race. Gordon has completed his pit stop and finds himself back out into the lead once again. We'll take another break and be back with more of our live ABC coverage of the Purolator 500. <coughs> you see uh, Marlon on that stop? He had to go out and around that car and then duck, duck right back in. Thank That's you. why he lost so much time. Yeah, I see. He lost. A lot I think of time. he was a little hesitant because he knew that Gordon was in the pit and didn't know if he was going to roll on him while he was blocked by that car. 
Okay, I got it. Good chunk. <laughs> there are the Is tomorrow night, Monday? Yeah, something like that. Jeff Gordon continues to lead the NASCAR Winston Cup Purolator 500. Tomorrow night on ABC, it's an all-new episode of Coach at 8, 7 Central. Then Shelly Fabre guests on a special edition of a whole new ball game. Then Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman star in the dramatic conclusion of Far and Away, all tomorrow night on ABC. While Jeff Gordon continues to lead this race, let's go back and find out what happened to Dick Trickle. First of all, we're going to show you from the in-car camera. There we see Bobby Labonte. They're working on the left front. Some guy's wiping off the grill. And they had some kind of problem, and Trickle drives away, and boom, the left front tire. What? Here's the angle from the camera down in turn one, right behind Bobby Labonte's car. They let the jack down, and Trickle drives off, and there the tire comes rolling down pit road. And then the crew had to come out and physically lift the car so that they could get a jack under it before they could get the tire on. Meanwhile, while that was going on, Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race, had to come in for a pit stop, and his pit was located almost directly beside the problems that the Dick Trickle was having. Now let's go to Jerry Punch. Guys, the problem Trickle had doesn't happen very often. What it does, it can create a disaster we saw a moment ago in the pits. Donnie Wingo, the crew chief, was putting the lug nuts on the left front tire, and the lug nut jammed in the gun here. And no matter what you do, spinning the gun, trying to pry it out, the lug nut would not come out. Now, he'd only had put one lug nut on. He's trying to pry this lug nut out. They drop the jack. Trickle pulls away. And, of course, you saw what happened. That left front tire fell off. Yeah, now the lug nut comes out, but a little <laughs> bit too late for Dick Trickle. Back up there. All right, the three car and the 18 car are moving through traffic. They're running third and fourth at the moment as Terry Labonte continues to run in second place. Earnhardt third and Bobby Labonte is fourth as we show you the entire field summary courtesy of Napa. And Schrader's going by Darryl, Dale Jerry on the outside. That's the seventh spot. Labonte's trying to get Earnhardt. Didn't Earnhardt just pass Labonte? I think they've been going at it, uh, yeah, back and forth for the last couple of laps. And, Ern and uh, Schrader and Jared have been going at it for a long time, it seems. Labonte has... Now Bobby almost in a passing position here on Earnhardt. I guess I'm told that Earnhardt won the race out of the fence that... Labonte has called Dale Earnhardt and is now trying to get back by. And it looks like that Bobby Labonte is going to pass Earnhardt. That's right. They have trouble with the right rear on Bobby Labonte's car during right. his pit stop. That's yep. right. So move Labonte up to third. Bobby, that is. We can't refer to them by last name because Bobby is running third and Terry second. There is Dick Trickle. Lost the tire in which lost the car in yeah, tire in the pits. He's back up to speed and he's running 25th. Five laps down. Nick Trickle. Joe Nemechek behind Earnhardt. 
He's in 20th spot, three laps down. As we have 99 laps to go in this 328 lap affair. Moving up to seventh position, the Henry cars are now first, second, and seventh. I think you have a pole down in the garage here, the most impressive driver of 1995. Well, I guess Jeff Gordon would be first. Bobby Labonte would certainly have to be second. Let's try to show you some of the, uh, or actually, we'll try to show you all of the drivers that are out there. There's a leader, Jeff Gordon. These won't be in, of course, the way they are running in the serial scoring. These are the way they are on the racetrack. There is Jimmy Spencer, and uh, a tough afternoon for Jimmy. Yes, he crashed out in turn one when Steve Kinzer and Brett Bodine made contact. He was trying to avoid the spinning hit. Crashed in the wall. He had to take a provisional to get into the race. Finds himself at the moment in 34th position. Jimmy Spencer, 78 laps down, spending a lot of time behind the wall getting repairs made to the car. There is Mark Martin in the number six Ford, and uh, he is in 12th position, two laps down. Next car on the Sequence is Ricky Rudd, tied Ford. He is currently in ninth spot, a lap down. Remember, he had a problem with the right front as Jerry Fudge reported and lost the lap. Back of him is the number five car driven by Terry Labonte, who is running in second position. Reported that his car was loose before the last pit stop. I'm sure Gary Dehart and the crew made the adjustments that the body wanted. There's the straight arrow car. He's had a pretty good afternoon, although he's two laps down at the moment, shown in 13th position, Gary Cope. I've been using that mane and tail. Don't you think my hair looks a lot better, Bob? <laughs> what hair, Ben? <laughs> There's the 33 car of Robert Presley. He's 68 laps down in 33rd position. He's been in and out of the pits virtually since the start of the race. Benny. And all, the reason he went in the pits, they said they missed a combination. They're trying to find what it takes to get around the Atlanta Motor Speedway. They changed springs, shocks, just an assortment of things. Then we see Bobby Lebon, the interstate car, currently our third place car. By the way, while we're talking about, or while you were just a moment ago, that car used to be driven, the one that Robert Presley drives, used to be driven by Harry Gant. Harry had a crash on his motorcycle this past week, and we want to wish him uh, the best wishes. Yes, five broken ribs, ruptured spleen, so, but Harry is home. He's doing okay, as Dave Marcus is going around the racetrack. Another car that crashed out in turn one with the uh, Red Bull 9 Steve Kinder track. Dale Earnhardt holding down fourth position at the moment. Earnhardt was our pole sitter here this afternoon. Eligible for $15,200 in Unical bonus money. Here's the number nine car of uh, Lake Speed in 19th position, three laps down. Oh, that sun is heated yeah. to be a problem up yeah. in turn three now. You can see what we referred to a little bit earlier, the glare that the drivers encounter in turn three this time of year here in Atlanta. This is from inside Dick Trickle's car. Burger King car, Joe Nemechek. Nemechek is 20th, he's three laps down. Here comes the 75 of Todd Bodine, 23rd, four laps down. And he's had a, lost a couple of engines this weekend. It's not been a good weekend for the Bodine Burger, no. Trust me. Todd uh, has performed very well in the first three races of the year, but things have not gone his way today. Of course, right behind him is the fifth place car of Sterling Marlin. The Daytona 500 winner for the second year in a row. And there's Ricky Craven, the top rookie in 1995 so far. 
and he is the top rookie in this race at the moment, finding himself in 14th spot, two laps down. Ricky Craven driving for the Larry Hedrick team. And that's not an opinion, folks. They have a point system in this. Yes. There's Bill Elliott back home again in Dawsonville, not too far from Atlanta. But things again not going well for Bill here today. He's three laps down in 21st. And Rusty Wallace right now is in 10th place. He's a lap down. He and Ricky Rudd, the only two cars, one lap down. Morgan Shepard is on the lead lap. He's in sixth position, driving for the Wood Brothers. The Wood Brothers have won more races here in Atlanta than any other uh, team, 12. Let's just see how bad the glare is as Morgan Shepard comes off turn two, the condominiums, and heads down the back straight away. That's Rusty Wallace right in front of him. Now just keep track of Rusty Wallace, folks, as Morgan drives down in turn three into a setting sun. Not too bad. And he's probably got the tape on the windshield there, doesn't he? He has, that is tape right underneath the that rear helps. mirror. Yeah, that helps. John Andretti, Kmart Little Caesars car. Of Adams Haas, Tim Brewer, the crew chief. He had his best Winston Cup finish last week at 10th at Richmond. He's 15th today, two laps down. And right behind him is Greg Sachs. And Sachs ran so well early on, had to go in the garage where he worked on the car. He's back on the racetrack and he's still running well. There's another one of our cars on the lead lap. That's Ken Schrader in car number 25. And right behind him is the 28 car of Dale Jarrett. And he is in eighth position. So that's really the closest battle for position that we have on the track at the moment. Next car behind these two is the family channel car of uh, Greg Sack. We saw him already. See, I said it was a 16 car, but in fact, it's the 20, we've seen the 37 already. It's the 29 of Steve Grissom. Two laps down in 16th place. Next car we pick up on will be the number 11 car of Brett Bodine. 24th at the moment, four laps down. There he is, the Junior Johnson ride. He was involved in that. Actually, he didn't spin or have any contact. He had slight contact with Steve Kinzer, but it didn't damage his car whatsoever. He continued on. But there goes a leader right by him, putting him another lap down. That'll make him five laps down. The only car I think we haven't seen is Ted Musgrave, and he is slow. Ooh! Did they almost make contact? Look like they did. The 16 car is slow. Let's see. Ted is, uh, where is he? 22nd. Four laps down. Well, there's another car we didn't see. Kyle Petty, the Coors Light car. Kyle is currently 17th. Three laps down. And his father's car, we don't think we've seen. Bobby Hamilton, the STP car. Did we miss Rick Nass, too? I think maybe we did. He's in 11th position, just two laps down. Orton's just running too fast. <laughs> now, just in the length of time that we have uh, been doing our pan backs here, we've seen uh, Jeff a couple of times. There's Jeff Bodine in car number seven. Still out there. He's been in and, out, in and out of the pit several times. 60 laps down. Now, those are all the cars that are on the racetrack. And there is Jeff Gordon. How much of a lead does he have? 13.2 on Terry Labonte. And back to Sterling Marlin in fifth, there's 21.7 seconds. Jeff Gordon is looking for his second victory of 1995. We'll be right back. Where are you going? Yo. Ford Chevy recap. <clears throat> All right.
First five cars are Chevys. Yeah. Morgan's a Ford Hope right now. Yeah. And the 28 car, maybe. Yeah. He looks like. Uh, can they all make it on one more stop, guys? Yeah. How long ago did they stop? Uh, they stopped at 2.15, so just before 300 would be my guess. Yeah, yeah they can make it no problem. One more. And six and four was the original proportion, wasn't it? Six, three. Six and three and one. Six, three and one. into the record book. You're looking at the leader, Jeff Gordon. ABC seems to be lucky for Jeff. Remember, he won the Brickyard 400 last year, and he has been the dominant power in this race thus far. At the start of the race, we talked about the young comers within NASCAR racing. He is certainly one of them down in third position right now is the 18 car, Bobby Labonte. So he's had a pretty good day as well. In that battle between Ford and Chevrolet, well, they started out with Six Chevys in the uh, top ten, three Fords and one Pontiac. Now it's six Chevys and four Fords, and the hope seems to be Morgan Shepard, who currently runs in sixth place. So it's a fairly safe hope at that. Let's go pit side and Jerry Punch. Jeff Gordon's pit crew has been nicknamed the Rainbow Warriors because of the brightly colored uniforms that they wear as associated with their sponsor, DuPont. Now, their pit board actually is a tomahawk with a rainbow attached. However, they have a ritual here in the Gordon pit. Whenever Gordon passes a car that's been on the lead lap, they reach over and pull that rainbow, and that tomahawk begins to chop here as Gordon goes by and gives it a big smile. How appropriate here in Atlanta we would have the tomahawk chop going on here in the speedway. Well, if you got to pull that thing, you've been pretty busy today because he has been cruising through this field constantly. We've had a light scattered cloud cover come over the speedway, but it hasn't affected the surface. Bright sun on the surface most of the way. Now, if they can continue to run green, we expect the next stops to come somewhere just before the 300th lap, and that should take them all the way to the checkered flag with just one more stop to go. Now, Gordon closes on Jarrett. Towards other hope, currently running in eighth place, and not if, but when he moves around that car, that will leave just seven cars on the lead lap. Yeah, Jerry, tell those guys to get ready because here he goes, right on the outside of Dale Jarrett, and goes right by him down the back straight. There it there is. You go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Jack Arood, who has a story on the uh, 18 car driven by Bobby Lamonti. Well, Bob, at the top of the show, we were talking about the emergence of the long, young Lions, and all through the show, you guys have talked about how well Bobby Lamonti has done in 1995. Well, I talked to Bobby earlier today, and he said, you know, the best way to put my success into perspective is five years ago, I had a Chevrolet Camaro, a used Chevrolet Camaro, and it cost me $268 a month for the car charge, for the car payment. He says, nowadays, it costs me $500 a month just for my cellular phone bill. He says, my, how much and how great things have changed for me in just five short years. Yes, indeed. You know, the other thing that's interesting, I did a little checking in. 15 of the 42 drivers that started today's race have three years of experience 
in NASCAR Winston Cup racing, including, of course, Bobby Labonte. There are five rookies that started the race. There are three drivers that have, that are in their third full year of NASCAR Winston Cup competition, and there are seven that are in just their second year of NASCAR Winston Cup competition. Well, a lot of improvements have been made here at Atlanta Motor Speedway since we've been coming here. Bruton Smith, the owner of this facility, has built some gorgeous condominiums that tower over a grandstand in turn number two. Now, Bruton Smith has also made a major announcement here in the last few days. Texas Motor Speedway is going to be built. These are some artist renderings of the facility, which will be built down in uh, the area of Dallas-Fort Worth, and it should give uh, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series another track on which to compete. Bruton Smith, the owner of this facility and the new Texas World Speedway. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you, Bob. We have a very special guest with us, Mr. O. Bruton Smith, who's the CEO of Speedway Motorsports Incorporated, uh, the parent company of Charlotte and Atlanta Motor Speedways. Mr. Smith, a lot of excitement. Uh, Ten days ago, you announced the official site for your new racetrack uh, pattern after Charlotte. It'll be just north of Fort Worth. Now, our first question is, uh, what's the timetable? When will you begin and when will you have it finished? Well, the, of course, the next announcement we'll have is the groundbreaking ceremony, and uh, we hope to be able to get that done uh, in the very, very near future. And I don't have a date yet, but uh, we're working toward that now, uh, uh, Jerry. And uh, hopefully after that comes groundbreaking. So that's, that's the process. With some 69 Fortune 500 companies involved in our sport, uh, it seems like Texas would be a market everyone would covet. Do you have a shot at getting a Winston Cup race there? Oh, I, I tell you, I think that our sport needs that Dallas-Fort Worth market. It's a huge market in, the, uh, in North Texas, or all of Texas. And, of course, what, what I'm building there, I can assure you the whole Southwest will be proud of it. And we're putting everything we've learned in 35 years into it. And we're just, just thrilled about it. And I, can't, I just can't wait to get started on it. Well, we know if you're involved with it, and you are, it will be a first-class facility like Charlotte and like in Atlanta. Good luck to you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that confidence, and I, I promise I won't let you down. Thanks a lot. Bob, uh, Mr. Bruton Smith here, chairman of the board for both these Speedway. Back to you. We uh, mentioned that the facility could provide a venue to which NASCAR Winston Cup would go, but will it then? <laughs> I don't know, but those, certainly Bruton doesn't have a date in his pocket yet. And Billy France last November in New York said that the only way we can add dates now is drop a date. And I don't think we have anyone on the Winston Cup circuit that wants to drop a date. Uh, Bruton now has four races, two here in Atlanta, two in Charlotte, but certainly drop one of those dates for Atlanta is not a, an option I think people want to explore. So it's hard to say exactly what's going to happen. But I guarantee you, Bruton is so excited about building this racetrack. That's practically all he talks about is get it this racetrack in Texas off the ground. If you key on something that he said there, it would be something the state of Texas would be proud of. If you use this track, you mentioned, Bob Jenkins, how long we've been coming here and what a substantial change has occurred here with the new condominiums and the VIP skyboxes and everything. Same thing over at Charlotte. They do build and maintain a really quality facility. And there's no question that that is a good market for auto racing down there in that area, not only for the stock cars, but I'm sure the Indy cars, Paul, would also like uh, to uh, penetrate that market. Well, Dallas-Fort Worth, everybody wants to be there, and the Devil's Bowl at Mesquite is not serving the 100,000-person <laughs> crowd. You see, as we look back from Morgan Shepard's car, the leader, Jeff Gordon. Now, if he should come up and pass Morgan Shepard, and again, it's not so much if as when, there will only be five cars on the lead lap as Morgan Shepard is running sixth. And there will be no Fords on the lead lap. Yes. Here's John Kernan with more on Morgan Shepard. Well, I just talked to Eddie Wood, and he says, you got something to throw out on the racetrack? Please do. We need a caution very, very badly. The car that's been pushing tight all day long continues to be so. Morgan having to fight the car as we see Jeff Gordon go by Derek Coke now set his sights on Morgan to try and put him a lap down. But these guys in the Wood Brothers bin want to see that yellow flag fly very, very soon. Has there ever been a driver lap the entire field here at Atlanta in this race? Yes, it happened in 1978, most recently, when Bobby Allison was a lap over Dave Marcus at the end. In fact, it's been done six times in the Purolator 500. Okay, here comes Jeff Gordon. He's on the inside of Morgan, down, going down towards turn one. Oh, Morgan is 
trying his best to hold him off, but they might have to fight in a losing battle. Yes, to no avail. Oh, don't pull up now. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know to come up. And there it is again. <laughs> He's passed another car. Five cars now on the lead lap, and all of them are Chevys. Mark Martin, meanwhile, has come in. Jack Aroon. Such a disappointment for Mark Martin and his crew. Before the race, they thought they had a great shot to keep up with this, the Monte Carlos, but that has not been the case after running out of fuel. They continue to make chassis adjustments on the right rear quarter of the car. All four tires are going in, but right now for Mark Martin, it's an emotional roller coaster and one where he's on the downside at the present time. Steve Brissom has just completed service on his car and begins to roll away. Rick Mast heading for his assigned pit area. There he is. He comes to stop. The right side's going on the car. And you can see the sign being hung out for the 28 car, which is coming down pit road. John Kernan. Rick Mass crew in the middle of a four-tire change. This is a new car. They run well last fall with a different car, but they built this new car, brought it here. Rick said he had no idea what would be in store for him until he got into the race, and they've run near the top ten. Let's go down to Jack Aroo. Well, John Kernan, Dale Jarrett, who used to drive a Chevrolet, now at the wheel of the Thunderbird. He takes on four tires, makes a chassis adjustment, and they will make their final pit stop of the day. You know, earlier in the week, Jarrett said if he knew then what he knew now, he might have stayed with the Chevrolet. 18.7 second pit stop for Dale Jarrett. Rusty Wallace coming in the pits, making his final pit stop. Jack Aroot. One year ago, this was the fastest pit crew you'd ever see week in and week out. But a change on pit stops, not allowing men to flip-flop back and forth across the wall, has made everything a little bit different here on pit road. For Rusty Wallace, four tires, the final gallons of fuel being added, and he is off and away in 18.6 seconds. Good pit stop for the team as Rusty Wallace pulls back out on the racetrack. One reason these cars are stopping just a little bit short, they could probably run a few more laps, but they want to get on the racetrack with those fresh tires and try to make up as much ground on the leader, Jeff Gordon, as much as they can, hoping that they'll get a caution flag about five or six laps from now. Here's Bobby Hamilton rolling in, Jerry. And uh, Richard Petty's STP Pontiac will get what should be its final scheduled service of the day as Bobby Lewis and company change all four tires while just in front of them, the car number 10. Ricky Rudd pulling in with his tied four. So the 43 car, left side tires coming off, going on. It's full of fuel. What a great run they had at Richmond a week ago, getting a top 10 finish for Bobby Hamilton. All love nuts are on. He is down and away. Worth it. Work being completed now, Ricky Rudd's car, and they finally get the left side. Problem for what with the left rear. Now it's off the jack, and Rudd is away. Benny, there's something else hanging over these pit stops behind the, the signs, the sign that's hung out, and uh, it looks like it's on the end of a long fishing pole. What is that? Those are cameras, video cameras, video and all these pit stops. These guys videoing them. And after the pit stop, they go back, replay them, and see what they did right, what they did wrong, and try to change things. Almost every team has one now. Dale Earnhardt is coming down. He's a rather long way from you, Jerry, but he'll be there before too long. And they have been wrestling with a car that has been very, very tight. As Earnhardt comes in and right behind him, about 100 yards, comes the Daytona 500 winner for the second year in a row, Sterling Marlin. A pair of Chevrolets, both on the lead lap hitting what would be their final pit stop of the afternoon. Right side tires are all in the Earnhardt car. Likewise, love dust going on on the Kodak Chevy. Crew now working on the left side of Dale Earnhardt's machine. They scamper to the left side of Sterling Marlin's car. Earnhardt is off the jack. He is away. Good pit stop for the children's crew. They pull the jack on Sterling Marlin, and he is out of the way in less than 22 seconds. 87 car of Joe Nemechek also coming down. Benny, these, these pit stops are coming with about 55 laps to go. They can go the rest of the distance, can't they? No problem whatsoever making them fuel the rest of the way. All right, here's the 18 car of Bobby Labonte on its way down for its what should be final pit stop of the race. Interstate Batteries crew goes to work. Here's Jerry. 
In fact, Bobby Labonte wanted to try to stay out about three or four more laps until Jeff Gordon did it. Gordon could make it until lap 280 on fuel if he needed to, but he couldn't make it on fuel, so Labonte brings the Interstate Batteries car in for his final stop. The windshield being cleaned, there's already take there. As a part of the 21 comes down pit road and John Curtin is there. Changing less dive tires, Eddie Wood puts on the tire, guns the air, and Courtney Shepard guns the engine, they are down and away, another fast pit stop. Let's go down to Jerry Labonte's pit and Jack Well, Jerry Labonte is going to make one important chassis adjustment on this final pit stop. They have changed the tire pressure in hopes of getting the car just perfect for this last round of circuit around the Atlanta 1.5 mile super speedway. You know, they compete against the Rainbow Warriors of Dean Hendrick, but in 19.2 seconds, they say they want to be known as the Rooster Brigade. But here comes the Rainbow Warriors. Time to go to work, Jerry. And watch it as they will go to work as the Rainbow Warriors get set for their final pit stop. Remember the miscue they had in Daytona? That was embarrassing, frustrating, and downright ugly for this team that had several meetings. They realized that two members of this pit crew are brand new off the championship crew of a year ago. It is their job to get their driver back on the racetrack and preserve what should be a certain victory here in Atlanta. Right side tires are on. So far, no miscues. But here's where the problem was in Daytona. The jack fell in Daytona. No jack problem right now. Car. Left rear tires are on. Left tires are on. They pull it. A perfect pit stop in 19.9 seconds, and Gordon heads back to turn one. They did make a little bit of a chassis adjustment. Did you notice that? Did they really? Yes, they did in the uh, in the right rear. There's Dick Trickle going out. And obviously, these crews can make a fast pit stop in 19.9 seconds, but why should you worry about, why exactly. worry about speed when you have a 12, 15 second lead? Be sure that you do it as correctly as possible. They did. It was a couple of seconds slow. And John Andretti drops off the pace. He's coming in for a pit stop. I don't think he has been in for a stop during this sequence, so this would be routine. Jack Aroot is there as John comes down. Young John Andretti and the crew waiting for Andretti to pull onto pit road to see what the problem might be. Tim Brewer, he will lead the crew. Michael Krenip is sitting atop the pit cart. They will go to the right side, taking out fuel. It will be a four-tire change. Looks to me, gentlemen, as if this is just his final stop. Now, they stopped out of sequence, and Tim Brewer said that the car was handling just so badly, they thought a change of tires would help. Obviously, they could have gone a lot further without more fuel, and they had in a 20.3 second stop, they had a right front that is not blistered, it's blown apart. So that's gonna draw, uh, drop John Andretti back in the standings a bit down to 19. Now, I talked about Dale Jarrett stopping a little bit short just a moment ago. There he is. Now, if we move behind this group of cars, we'll see that Jeff Gordon, the leader, has not lapped the 28 car. The 28 car is now back in the lead lap. He was able to run those five or six laps on those fresh tires that much faster than Jeff Gordon. Now, he just hoped for a caution flag, flag in this two or three lap window because Jeff Gordon's going to blow, going to blow by him in just a second. 25 car has not pitted. He is the leader of the race. We're seeing a uh, situation here of fresh tires and old tires. Dale Earnhardt with the pressure ones. He's going to be able to go by Ken Schrader, but Schrader should be in before too long for his last scheduled pit stop. Speedway. His car won the ARCA race on Friday with Jimmy Horton driving. He finished second in the Bush Light 300, the Bush Grand National race yesterday, and currently is leading the Pure Later 500. Until now, when yes. he uh, comes in for his final pit stop. Staying within the speed limit down pit road, here's John Curtin. Schrader trying to stay out there on the racetrack after he got a lap down, tried to get his lap back and then hope for a caution. The engine's still running, not out of gas as of yet. So he keeps gunning it, gunning it. Right side tires have changed. No chassis adjustment made. Probably an air pressure adjustment as the car had gotten a little bit loose on him. But Schrader is still sitting here off pit road waiting. Jack is dropped. Kitty is down and away. 19.9 seconds. So now, with all the pit stops having been made, it's back to Jeff Gordon setting the pace for this event with 284 laps now and of 328 completed. He is about to put the 21 car a lap down. Morgan Shepard running in eighth position at the moment.
helmet on the lead lap. But now goes a lap down once again. Dale Jarrett is just ahead in seventh position. The old Tomahawk has really been waving here this afternoon because Jeff Gordon has been making a shambles of this race. He leads the Botlabani brothers, and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. have to be any wordle. Yep. Yep. All right. All righty. Yeah, okay. live coverage of the NASCAR Winston Cup Pure Later 500 from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Coming up next, right after our live coverage, will be the first race in the 1995 International Race of Champions from Daytona International Speedway. Paul Page and Benny Parsons will be there to describe the action. And, uh, of course, we're not going to say who won the race. Let's just say it was one of the most exciting and perhaps controversial finishes that we'll see in a long time. Well, the IROC cars running at Daytona. I mean, they're always right together, all 12 of them the whole way. And Benny, I think you got a kick out of calling your first IROC. I really did, Paul. And something like, what, 12, 15 lead changes in just 40 laps around the Daytona International Speedway. It was a great race. I truly enjoyed it. That's coming up next at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time. We can't let it go. It was a good early part of the race, but the finish, yes. you got to <laughs> stick around for that. It was sensational. Never seen Bobby Labonte in third place, and he's running down his older brother in second place, Terry Labonte. Closing in. Labonte, Terry Labonte's been having handling problems, but uh, I don't know, Bobby may be able to take that second spot away. And you know, Randy Dorton and the guys from Henry Engine, Rick Henry Engine Shop, they've got to be awfully proud because they also build engines for the 18 car. Wow. Right now they're running one, two, three. Pretty impressive. Just 35 laps to go in this one. Labonte came into this race 19th in the point standing, but that really is no indication of how well this car has run in all races this year. He's had two top 10 finishes. Terry Labonte, meanwhile, is fourth in the point standings coming in with one victory over his belt already.
Everyone in racing knows Terry and Bobby's father, Bob Labonte. I wonder who he's pulling for right now. <laughs> I'm sure he's not pulling for anyone. I'm just, yeah, he's remaining neutral. Exactly. There's Ted Musgrave being passed. That is in 20th position. As a matter of fact, Bob Labonte is the crew chief on Terry Labonte's Wood Grand National car. Used to be the crew chief on Bobby's car. That interval is definitely shrinking, though, between the Labonte brothers, as you see in Napa Field Summary. Four cars on the lead lap. We saw Billy Standridge going back onto the racetrack. He's been in and out of the pits, also involved in one of our early accidents. He's 27. A very disappointing day for Bill Elliott. Yes, a local hero here. Five time winner of this at this racetrack, two time winner of this race. Since there isn't a whole lot of uh, passing going out on the racetrack, let's jump in some of the cars out here and uh, check our in-car cameras. This is with Brett Bodine. A little bit of glare there in the third corner. Not very bad, though. That's Rick Mass directly in front of Brett as they go down in turn one. Uh-oh, here we go. Battle for second position. The Labonte brothers, Bobby on the inside and Terry on the high side. Here we go, and Bobby has it. Jerry Punch. A minute ago, Jimmy Maycar, Bobby Labonte's crew chief, radioed Bobby and said, hey, what do you have for the five car? Can you get the five? And Bobby said, yeah, we'll get the five car. We're better at longer runs than my big brother, Terry. Then Jimmy asked the $64 question. How about the 24 car? Can you get the 24? Bobby paused for a moment and said, are you kidding? He's in another zone. Forget that. <laughs> That's right. He's in another area coming. Yeah. Trickle watches these guys go by him. Oh, Christ out in turn one. Schrader has hit the wall down in turn one. Caution comes out. Schrader at the bottom of the racetrack in the grass. Our fifth caution of the afternoon. And Ken Schrader, who was in seventh position, smacks the wall in the second corner. This coming with a little more than 27 laps to go. Smoke coming from the right front of that car is the bodywork rubbing on the wheels. There is one hot individual. Yeah, trust me. Why is that? Well, he just hot. <laughs> did he get help out there? I don't know if he did or not. I really don't know. I looked up and uh, I saw the. What happened outside of our camera range? And apparently he cut a tire down, Benny. But yeah, he would be very unhappy because he's run almost 500 miles, had a great run going. And to be in this shape at this point in the race is very disgusting. Here's John Kernan down there as Kenny comes to a stop. Kenny slides in uh, with that right side, the right front tire dragging the ground, a lot of uh, sheet metal damage and maybe even some bent suspension parts as Kenny's already taken the window net down, a lot of smoke coming from out of the uh, car, out of the cockpit of the club. They finally get the jack under it and they will go to work on it now, Bob. Well, all this does give the leaders, or actually everyone, an opportunity to come in for an extra pit stop. Let's go to Jerry Punch. And we will see four tires going on uh, the car number 24 of Jeff Gordon. They will not put any any fuel in the car. They don't have fuel cans here. They will just possibly tighten the car up slightly. Let's check in up where you are, Jackaroo. Well, Jerry, it's a case of monkey see, monkey do. If the leader pits and you're on the same lap and you have any hope, you try and stay out, no. You've got to come in, take on fresh rubber. That's the case with Bobby Labonte and Terry Labonte. Let's go back upstairs. You can see there's only four cars on pit road because you have to be on the lead lap pit right now. As Labonte comes out, here comes Labonte, Gordon Labonte, and Labonte. Vern are still in there. Car still sitting there. There he finally moves away. 
He was the last one to come in and he had to go the furthest distance, but still uh, sat there for a little longer than I thought he would as Ken Schrader sits amongst his smoking car. The hood is up, they're checking suspension parts, hoping to get Kenny back in the race after he hit the wall up in turn number two. And we've seen there's oil on the inside of the hood. Evidently, he's knocked an oil line or something off as the tire was flopping around. See all that? Just get the car there. The NASCAR inspector Chip Warner tells us, "Got to get the car on the pit road. Everyone's coming in." Indeed, everybody not on the lead lap. Of course, there are only four that are have now come in for some final service in this caution period. There you see the lapped cars: Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, Morgan Shepard, top to bottom. Pit road on the right. The fifth place car is Dale Jarrett. And the seventh place car of Morgan Shepard and the ninth place car of Mark Martin. And Mark Martin has worked himself back into this race. Yes, he has. He was a couple laps down, but he stopped early. He's still a lap down, but may have a top 10 finish here. Certainly, certainly didn't look that way a few laps ago. Yep, that's for sure. 302 to go to complete it now. 26 to go here. Can Jeff Gordon hang on to the lead? We'll be right back. No kidding. Right over there to your right. Right behind Chuck Mills. Oh, okay. Coming right over the track. Yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. wait for me. We got ourselves a shootout. That saved Earnhardt. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Paul Page, I have good news and bad news. The good news is you will be going to Australia. The bad news, you're going to have to go by balloon. I'm, I'm not sorry, going to get there this year. Side, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Paul and the rest of our ABC crew will be in Australia for next Sunday's coverage of the Australian IndyCar Grand Prix. That's at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central Time here on ABC. Second race of the free season. First one one week ago. Jock Villeneuve won the thing. Yes, very impressively. Well, there's Brooke Gordon, Jeff's new wife, hoping that her husband can hold on and lead these last few laps as he has led for most of the laps today. As a matter of fact, he has. Needless to say, picked up the five bonus points for leading the most laps in this event. But I tell you one thing, we got ourselves a shootout. Yeah, we do. Because you know Bobby Labonte wants to win this race as badly as anyone. 
So does Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt for that's that matter. Earnhardt always wants to win. That's right. We take a look at the full field summary. You can see that this caution really saved Earnhardt from the embarrassment of getting put a lap down as Gordon continues to go up through his field. And the top four cars there, of course, the, the top cars on the lead lap, all Chevrolets. So that uh, Chevrolet Ford battle that we uh, mentioned at the top of the show has now been handily won by Chevy. All right, we're set to go once again as you see the rest of the field and the green flag comes out once again. We are back to racing at Atlanta. And let's see now if Jeff Gordon can do what he has done all day in the day. Yeah, that is pull away from everybody. but Jeff appears to be pulling away. <laughs> Meanwhile, Terry Labonte now takes second from Bobby. That, and I think we've established that Terry Labonte is a little bit better on fresh tires than Bobby. Let's see what Earnhardt can do. Earnhardt looking at Bobby Labonte just ahead, trying to find the right time to make a bid. If, if Earnhardt can get this spot, he will. But I think Earnhardt right now has to be thinking about Winston Cup championship. And he's seen these guys run hard all day long. He'll only take a spot if it's easy. I think Dale Earnhardt is thinking about Winston Cup championship every race this year because if he wins the championship this, this year, of course, it's his eighth. And that breaks the tie he currently has with Richard Petty. Morgan Shepard has broken out of that. Uh, oh man, what a pack of cars that look is. Look at this. Three well, wide. And Elliott is down on the inside, off the pace. Looks like his car is smoky. Bill Elliott drops off the pace. Yes, his car is smoking. See the. Yes, it is. Is that the left front? I don't know, but it's got uh, smoke coming from it. Meanwhile, we watch the bodies once again. Dale Earnhardt, second, third, and fourth. As they come down, there will be 19 laps to go for Jeff Gordon. This will be the third consecutive victory for the Rick Hendrick team. Jeff won at Rockingham, Labonte won at Richmond, and Gordon is leading in this one. And he has a six tenths of a second lead over Terry Labonte already. Bill Elliott turned his car in the infield rather than stall on the back straightaway. That was a very nice thing for Bill Elliott to do. Here in the early part of the season, things don't appear to be going any better for Bill Elliott than they have for the past couple of years, but I think everybody also believes that that will turn around before too long. Great race back for fifth spot between Dale Jarrett, Morgan Shepard, and Mark Martin. All three of those cars going for position, and Sterling Marlin also. Exactly. And Ricky Rudd, for that matter. <laughs> all oh, look Ooh. at Shepard. Mark all got in the corner. Looks like he's going to get a little bit sideways. Morgan gave him some room. But man, all the cars going by Mark on the outside now. He comes off the corner. Well, a different shot. There we see those three cars: Shepard, Martin, and Marlin, all running for position. And Rudd, although he isn't up battling as close as the others. Looks to the inside of Shepard off the fourth corner. On the straightaway, he pulls alongside of Morgan. Can he take the position? Yes. Morgan Shepard, by the way, a three-time winner here 
at Atlanta twice in this race. And here is once again a battle for second position between the Labonte brothers. Bobby takes the position from Terry, or tries to, almost did. But Terry battles back on the outside. Yes, Bobby has it. And all that battling for second position is just more good news for Jeff Gordon, who continues to lengthen his lead over these two cars. There he is, and there is second and third. just hoping the same problems that Kenny Schrader had a moment ago, whatever that was, that caused Schrader to get in the wall down in turn one. Doesn't happen to him. Now there is almost complete overcast. The sun hit by the clouds, and that may again spell the difference in somebody handling good or bad. Body running in second position could equal his best NASCAR Winston Cup career finish. He was second at Rockingham two races ago. And now he begins to pull away from Terry. Now Bobby Labonte has had a very good race car all day. Jimmy Maycar, all that crew. He's done a very good job. Sure has. He's been uh, in the top five into the top three most of the day. money we're talking about. Coming down now, and there are 11 laps to go. 317 complete. Pulling in and gaining a little bit, but I, I don't know whether he has enough. Yes, he is. Yep. Car going down the straightaway here with a lot of smoke is Steve Grissom. I don't think that's going to mean a caution or play any kind of a factor, but Grissom was smoking just for your information as a team down here. Well, don't let Jeff Gordon see that because that's also Rick Henry engine. Now here's a battle for fifth as Mark Martin is alongside Dale Jarrett. Mark Martin has had a great race car today. Unfortunately, fuel mileage is the bug that got him. Had to stop short a couple times and then the caution flag came out. And these are two Fords, so they have fifth and sixth position. And does continue to narrow the interval between himself and Jeff Gordon. Ah, uh, Jeff just got to catch it. Sure. <laughs> As you would if you were out there in the lead. Yeah, right. yeah, I'll just back off here and make it a good race. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow, look at Brooke. <laughs> we'll think that her husband can win his fourth NASCAR Winston Cup race. That's correct. Charlotte and Indianapolis last year. Rockingham, Rockingham this year. This year, yep. Ray Evernham watching. Yep. He too is hoping that this dominant race by Jeff Gordon can continue to the checkered flag. But wow, with seven laps to go. Look how close it is, and look how Bobby Labonte is cutting into Jeff's lead. Don't go away, folks. We could have a real interesting finish here. Terry Labonte has dropped back to a comfortable third, and Dale Earnhardt is in fourth position. Those two are not in a position to battle each other. This is where we keep our focus with six laps to go. It's now down to about eight or nine car lengths. Let's see Joe Gibb watching his driver. Joe Gibbs branching out into drag racing in 1995 after some success in Winston Cup racing. And look, it's down to three or four car lengths now. Yep. 
Jeff Gordon did not get to turn four that time very well at all. The car pushed up. Evidently, the car has taken on a push after that last tire change. Bobby Labonte has never won a NASCAR Winston Cup race. He is close to being able to do so, but can he? That is the question. He gets through the corner bending much better than Jeff Gordon looks like. Looks like the Jeff's car has picked up a push, as I talked about. Four laps to go. Gordon trying to hold off the challenge of Bobby Labonte. The interval still four or five car lengths. And you know that Ray Everham right now is trying his best. Rick Hendrick trying his best to talk Jeff Gordon and talk this car on Jeff. Take it easy. Take it easy. Don't push it so hard. We talked earlier about the young Lions, those who do not have a whole lot of experience in Winston Cup racing. Jeff Gordon is in his third full year of Winston Cup competition. And Bobby Labonte also in his third full year of competition. One of those two will come away the victor here today, most likely. Here is Jerry Punch with more on the story. Guys, motivation is so very important, particularly at this stage of the race. Jimmy Maycar is telling his driver every time he comes by, Bobby Labonte, he says, you can do it. You can do it. Bobby, you can do it. Repeatedly saying those words. And a minute ago, Ray Everham told his driver, you're the man. It's your race to win. You're the man. Every time he comes by now, he says, two laps to go. You're the man. Well, there is only one lap to go. When they come down, there's Ray Evernham talking to Jeff Gordon. Here's the white flag. We have one more lap to go. The interval has not shrunk in the last couple of laps. Jeff has been able to maintain this lead over Bobby Labonte. And now as he moves through the second corner and sees the middle of the back stretch, he knows that there's only a half a lap to go. Still separated by about four car lengths. Here comes Bobby Labonte's final bid to take the win here this afternoon. They move through the third and fourth corner. Off of the corner onto the straightaway. It looks like Jeff Gordon is going to win it. Yes, indeed. Gordon wins the Pure Later 500 by a car length or two over Bobby Labonte. There's Terry Labonte finishing in third position and Dale Earnhardt in fourth. And the celebration goes on in the Jeff Gordon pit. Here's Jerry Punch. And Ray, congratulations, the car ran perfectly. Well, it, it did, and I got I to gotta thank God first. I didn't do it at Rockingham, and I got to thank Jeff Gordon and all these guys second. Um, you know, they make my job awful easy. Hendrick Motorsports gives us great engines and great cars, and, and Jeff Gordon's about the best driver I've ever seen. And these Rainbow Warriors, I don't know, they make me look awful good. I'm just proud to be associated with them. What a cheerleader. You kept saying, you're the man, it's your race, don't let him take it. I mean, those last few laps, you guys back and forth talking to your drivers. Uh, hey, outstanding effort. Two crew chiefs, one and two, and your great friends and, and motivators. I tell you, this is fun. It really is what racing's all about. And you can have fun, I and mean, you run second. I told Bobby, I'm not normally happy about second, but I'd soon run second to him if I have to run second to anybody. But before this year's out, Bobby Labonte is going to cross the line in front of Jeff Gordon, I promise you. <laughs> hey, crew chiefs here. Hey, Joe Gibbs, who owns second place car, standing by with Jack Aru. And Jerry, the first man to congratulate Joe Gibbs was the winning car owner, Rick Hendrick. And coach, you said to him, hey, he keeps giving us the second motor. We want the first one. We got to catch Jeff. So proud of Bobby. I tell you what, really, we've been top five force rate races. Unbelievable. He is just absolutely great. I'm so happy for Interstate, Shell, and uh, and Champion, and EDS, and everybody that's there pulling for us all the time. General Motors, it's been absolutely fantastic uh, with Chevrolet, and good year. We're just mixed, happy. Mixed emotions last year when you lost your driver, Dale Jarrett. That's got to not be so such a tough deal now. Well, I, I tell you what, Dale did a great job for us when he was there and was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we thank the world of him. But when it became obvious he wanted to move on, we said, hey, we can't do it unless we get somebody great. Bobby was our choice, but he, he was really encumbered in a lot of other things. We were able to work that out. And we're just absolutely thrilled. He, he just, he, he is just, fan, I think, fantastic. Go celebrate with your driver. Let's go back to the tower. They finish here the way they finished at Rockingham a couple of weeks ago. Jeff Gordon wins, and Bobby Labonte comes home in second position.
Well, that was uh, closer than I thought it was going to be, Benny. I'll tell you what, Bobby Labonte <laughs> made a great, great charge there at the end of the race. It almost pulled it off. He sure did. Good run for Bobby Labonte all day, but the man who dominated this race was, without question, Jeff Gordon. His uh, fourth career win in 66 races, third win for Rick Hendrick in four events. Here's Jerry Punch in victory lane. And Jeff Gordon okay, about to perfect. climb out of the you car. And folks, moves. he is a very popular driver, not just among the fans, but among the crews here as he gets unbuckled. And let's take a listen. And Here's the winner lady, of the Pure Later 500. Stay around, Brooke. Don't run off on us. He got a big hug and kiss from Brooke Seeley Gordon. She is Brooke Gordon now. He called her Brooke Seeley at the back of forgetting he had married her just a month earlier. And he celebrates here. Has a nice cold drink after a long afternoon. And Jeff, congratulations on uh, an outstanding day. Oh, man, it sure was. Uh, these guys gave me a fabulous car today. I got to take my hat off to this whole DuPont crew. Man, I, I, this thing was on the rail. Bobby gave me uh, a little bit of... He got me pretty nervous there at the end of the race, but uh, you know we came here to Atlanta with the same car that we raced in uh, in Rockingham. It's an awesome car, man. We might have to take this thing everywhere, but wanted to come here to Atlanta. We announced our new sponsor, Coca-Cola. They're an, uh, uh, an associate sponsor. I mean, Dupont does everything in the world, and and we're really glad to have them. But that new sponsor that's here home, uh, Coca-Cola, we're really glad to have them. So this one's for them. Jeff, let's go back to the beginning of the race. Early on, there were some anxious moments. You and Earnhardt down in turn one. That had to, to make your heart skip a beat. What happened? It sure did. Uh, you know, we had a little bit better car than, than he did at the, at the time. And it was really hard to pass once you got, you know, out and the tires got some heat in them. So I wanted to get by him as quick as I could. I saw an opportunity. I didn't want to pass him low. I know what it's like to pass Earnhardt low, but we got by him. And then, uh, you know, he did the famous Earnhardt move and got right back underneath me coming off of two. And I thought, well, if I can stay outside and race him down into one, we're all right. Well, <laughs> it was so. Uh, one of those uh, contests that nobody wins, you know, it's like uh, who, who's going to let up first and, and uh, neither one of us. We drove down real deep in the corner. He slipped up a little bit and, uh, and got in the side of me. I had to check up a little bit, got high. Bobby got by us. We had to chase him down. But it, it was a lot of fun. And hey, you got to earn your rights when you're racing with Earnhardt. Let me ask you quickly, you mentioned at Rockingham, you uh, were going to go buy a pool now after you won a lot of money there. What what else is going on in the house? How about some landscaping? What's, what's the next room you're going to add? Uh, I don't know. We're going to have some accessories now, I guess. But uh, uh, we're going to have us a nice pool, I say, now. <laughs> I think Brooke was talking baby. How about it? No, no, no babies. No babies for a while. That's uh, We're going to have to win a lot of races before we do that. How about that, Brooke? No, it's going to be a while, definitely. A couple of years. Uh, those wins just keep on coming as they keep smiling here in Victory Lake. Let's go to John Curtin, who's got a family with him, the Labonte. John? I'm in a Labonte sandwich right now. I've got Bobby right here. Bobby finishing second, Terry third. Bobby, second time this year, you finished second behind Jeff Gordon. You gave it a real shot there at the end. Well, yeah, you know, the whole Interstate Batters crew, uh, they got me out of the pits real good. And uh, every time, uh, you know, Jeff set awesome pace there early on. And uh, we really just, you know, didn't know what it was going to be hard to stay on the lead lap, you know, fourth and fifth place. But, you know, as it turned out right there at the end, the uh, the whole uh, uh, whole Interstate Batters, uh, Chevrolet, Monte Carlo crew got me out. And, you know, were able to get back by Terry. Got me off of turn uh, four with the... Uh, uh, after went back to green and got back by him and just gave uh, Jeff a run as much as I could, but you know about run out of time. Uh, just uh, his car was pushing a little bit, so was mine. So it was pretty evenly matched there at the end, but he was pretty awesome throughout the day. How hard do you two guys race each other when you know your brother's out there? I mean, you're running for second place with a chance at the win. Would you run harder against each other if it were for the win? I run harder. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Terry? A, a great run today for you. Well, it was. Our Kellogg Chevy ran good and. Uh, you know, we came home third, so uh, we've got to be happy with that. Uh, it was a good run for us, and uh, the guys did a great job in their pit stops and everything, and Bobby got by me there at the end, but uh, we couldn't run with Jeff, and uh, those two cars, uh, they just had everybody covered. Now, do you guys, uh, ask, ask him, he asked you if you give any room, uh, do you give him, like, there on that move there at the end, did he just have a stronger car and get around here? When you saw him get up next to you, what, what happened there? Well, I knew he was going to get me sooner or later, and he, he had been a little bit faster for the last part of the race there. And I hit, got by him there and tried to hold him, hold, hold him off and uh, just couldn't do it. All right. Thank you, Terry Labonte. A fine finish today, Bob Jenkins. Jeff Gordon, the winner of the race, led 250 of the 328 laps. There were seven leaders, but a Ford failed to lead here today. A lot more post activity coming up. We'll be back to Atlanta in just a moment.
I'll bet that truck down there is waiting on us, Benny, and he's going to be waiting a long time if he is. Huh? Where is he? Yeah, I'm here. Where's Mark? Finished ninth. I was thinking of leaving, though. Right. How's he ninth? I thought he was fifth. How's he ninth? Who do, who do they show? Mark? Well, I, I yeah, figured he was one lap down. He made that. He made that caution. He crossed play. the line according to that monitor on fifth. Twenty-eight's what they're showing now. At the flag, they had Mark Martin scored in fifth. I know. I know that. I think he was one lap down. I think he made that caution flag. He stopped short, and I think he made that caution flag <laughs> that when when uh, Schrader crashed. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. Now you're cooking. Yeah, right. <laughs> no kidding. Well, the Pure Later 500 is over, and Jeff Gordon is the winner. Average speed just over 150 miles an hour. Let's uh, take an opportunity to talk to a lot of the other drivers in the field and to remind you that International Race of Champions is coming up next, so there's still plenty of great racing, but now let's go to John Kernan. Standing by with Dale Jarrett and uh, DJ, a pretty good run for you guys today as far as the Ford camp's concerned. Yeah, we scrapped all day. Uh, the guys in the pits and Larry McReynolds deserve this fifth place finish. They worked hard adjusting the car, uh, making great pit stops. And, uh, you know, just that was all that we had there. We finally got the car pretty good at the end, and uh, that's just all that, that we could do. Uh, we'll continue to work at it and uh, see if we can't get this Texaco Havlin Mac Tools Ford closer to the front yet. All right, thank you very much. Congratulations on a fine finish. And Jack Arruda has caught up with Dale Earnhardt. Well, the first person that Dale Earnhardt wanted to talk to is Mark Martin, who I'm sure Dr. Jerry Punch will be talking to in a minute. But, Dale, after the pole position win, everybody thought this was going to be your race, but then some blistered tires and some pushing conditions with the car. You really had to work all afternoon. Well, the car was a little too tight in the center, but, uh, you know, I didn't have enough for, for Gordon. Uh, it looked like Mark Martin was the best car on the racetrack. He was real strong. He come hey, out. now, wait a minute. Are you lobbying now with the Chevrolet Ford controversy? Well, look, look at it. If he hadn't had problems, he'd have been, if he was the fastest car, he passed me several times, and he was at, chasing <laughs> that 24 down. So bad luck, you know, gets you sometime. The point so important in the championship this year. <laughs> what did you just say, Mark? I just shook was my head. Not, was you not running good? No, did we didn't. Not, how many times you passed me? We did, just two. Two Three. Times. I counted. Three times. Three times. Hey, Benny, guys, the lobbying has already begun down here on pit road in the grass in the garage area. <laughs> Let's throw it to Jerry. Jerry, okay, see right. if you can get something out hey, of this I, Ford guy. Okay, now, wait a minute, Mark. They are saying that you were the fastest. Your Ford was the fastest car here. I don't know. Did they see the same race I saw? No, they were seeing a different race. Uh, that's just uh, trying. They're trying to guard their territory. They got everybody. Uh, the Fords covered big time right now, and they're they're guarding their territory. And you can't blame them. I've done the same thing, and when deals are turned around, but uh, you know, the, they, those guys were just too much. Uh, we had a great run. I couldn't be more proud of uh, this Valvoline Cummins team. They were awesome on pit road. Everything was great except I messed up, ran it out of gas, and then I got a, a tire on the car that I was afraid was coming apart, and. Uh, we're racing for this championship this year, and you can't race for a championship wreck. So I just came in and changed it and lost two laps. One of those deals, you know, and there wasn't anything wrong with the tire other than the car wouldn't handle on it. So it's a tough, uh, tough day for us, but we got another top 10 finish out of it. When things turn good for us, look out. 
Hey, this guy here was 20th, two laps down with 150 miles ago. He finished ninth today. Outstanding effort for Mark Martin. Let's go back to Paul Page. Yeah, if he hadn't run it out of gas, he would have definitely been up there at the front. The Fords did, in fact, race better than they qualify. The top ten was split five Fords, five Chevrolets, of course, one by Jeff Gordon. So here, Jeff Gordon scores the fourth win of his career and drove away handily. We'll be back to talk with more right after this. They're waiting on us. We're going to be waiting a long time. Can I get a ride with you around to that gate? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned. There's no way that that's right. Yeah. Because the six car okay. passed these guys here, and he did not pass the leader. So how how was he how was he was between was he between the 24 and the 28 and finished ninth the lap down? <laughs> I guess we did. So don't follow me. I'm not going to go uh, line by line. So I'm just going to chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a route. Well, Bobby Carter won the. Yeah. Keep on being annoyed. I hate that. Yeah, too. Hey, Neil, tell Ralph, tell that guard that we'll be down there at 5 o'clock. Tell Ralph. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, for the first time, the clouds cover all of Atlanta Motor Speedway. Celebration continues as Jeff Gordon has taken the win here. We'll take a look down through the entire field for you. Labonte Brothers finishing second and third. Dale Earnhardt, with that finish, still maintains his points lead in Winston Cup points. And then talking about things that we suggested at starting, well, Gordon and Bobby Labonte, Young Lions looking good, first and second position. And then look at the Fords coming in. They came in very strong with the uh, top Ford showing in the field, driven by Dale Jarrett and then Morgan Shepard. We can so see we look through the entire field now. We can just see how dominant that Jeff Gordon was because John Andretti finished 20th, five laps down. Normally, five lap down car would be in the 30s. So there they are, the whole 42 who started here on a quick, though not a record day. And we still have more drivers and fans to talk to. We'll be right back. Sorry, Paul. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. I figured you guys were concentrating on. That's yours. Hey, Mikey. Nope. <coughs> Ooh, not mine. Not mine. Mike. Especially if you do it in the first 50 laps of the race. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right after we finish our coverage here of the Pure Later 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway, it'll be the International Race of Champions, 12 of the best. And let me tell you, Benny and I absolutely love that one. They went back and forth at Daytona, and what's, his, what's his name one? I'm going to watch it again. He <laughs> was so excited. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> Let's go down the pits again, John Kernan. Well, a fine sixth place finish for Morgan Shepard, but a bit of a hot foot. He burned the heel on his left foot. Morgan, other than that, a pretty good day for you. It's pretty good. We just had the car a little bit too tight, had too much right front spring in it. Other than that, uh, the Sitco Thunderbird run good all day long. Well, with the finish, uh, I believe they move up into the top ten in the points. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. And Sterling Marlin will hold on to second spot in the points. In fact, gained some points on Mark Martin. Sterling, he finished seventh a lap down. Had a quick car, but not quite quick enough. I tell you, we, uh, you know, the Kodak team done a good job all day, and uh, we just ran in spurts. Had a, a good mid-race spurt there, but uh, we adjusted wrong when the car tore the end and got a little too loose and, and couldn't go anywhere. But, uh, you know, we survived, uh, wound up seventh, I guess, and, and held on to second points, and, uh, you know, it's the name of survival. Well, no, Chevrolet didn't lead all day long. Uh, Jack Aroots with the driver who was driving and led. It wasn't in a Chevy, was he, Jack? Yeah, Jerry, and his father calls it a pony act, but you uh, led one, finished in 14th position, Kyle Petty. A tough day. Yeah, we, we've been behind all week. I, I can't get around this place to save my life. And I screwed everybody up qualifying, and we weren't in a great <laughs> great pit, pit place back here, so we kept getting back. But we had a good run, a decent run. When you start that far back and you can come up and finish, 
you know, in the top 15 or 20, then you figure you beat half of them just out of being here. So it was pretty good. Hey, you always said that your long hair was your good luck, but you're not having very good luck now. Maybe you ought to go for the buzz cut. No, I'm going straight for if, if I go buzz, it's going to be shave and shine, buddy. It ain't going to be no buzz. It's going to be <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. Back up to you. <laughs> we see some gray hairs growing alongside that ponytail, too. This week it would give it that way. Well, when we come back, we'll take a final look at the standings here at Atlanta for the Pure Later 500. It's seven minutes till, though. We gonna use everybody? <clears throat> that's good. That's that's a good start. <laughs> start. <laughs> okay, we come back. <clears throat> now he's gonna make us pay. <laughs> you yeah. don't guess what he's gonna do. <laughs> Just follow me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awful. <laughs> so we can talk over those full fields and everything. Music under the rollout. Music under the roll. Music under the rollout. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Gordon has taken the win in the Pure Later 500. Best finishing rookie was Ricky Cravens. He finished in 12th position. Let's go down pit road and start with Jerry Punch. Paul, Atlanta Motor Speedway is a fast place, and when you have problems, it can hurt. It can hurt in a hurry. What you're looking at, well, earlier today, somewhere in this mess, this was a Pennzoil Pontiac. Now, it doesn't look like a Pontiac right now. It looks like something you might buy parts and pieces left, but uh, not much left to sell. But fortunately, Michael Waltrip began today in what was a race car here. He ended the day able to walk away because of the safety features of these cars. It's a long race, a fast race, and a safe race. That's what, what I'd like to say about this today's event. This was a car, now it's a pile of junk, but the driver walks away. Let's go to John Kernan. Well, of course, a little bit of luck involved in that, along with the safety. And speaking of luck, Rick Mast ended his string of bad luck, uh, finishing 11th today, Rick. I went and talked to Stonewall Jackson last week. He's buried where I live, you know, me and him had a long talk about adversity. I, I understand I don't have any adversity now. We finished 11th. <laughs> thanks, GI. Thanks, Cole. We'll be back with you. Just hang in there with us. All right, thank you, Rick. Jack? Well, John, at the top of the show, we talked about the new breed. We talked about the Ford Chevrolet controversy. Have any, has anything been answered? I don't think so. Chevrolet is still, well, victorious. Ford is still without a victory. The new breed, they're still scoring victories, and they're still running up front. That's what Winston Cup racing is all about, guys. It's the most exciting sport on earth, and we saw it in the Pure Later 500. Paul? And Dale Earnhardt is still the points leader as he leaves this track today. Here is the field summary of the uh, entire field, the final results. Uh, Jack perhaps said it, but we're talking, watching some change here in Winston Cup racing. We're watching the Chevrolets doing good. Pretty much what you guys predicted at start came to be. Yeah, it did, but, you know, not only was I impressed with Jeff Gordon today, but I've been, been impressed with he and his team 
all year long. Daytona 500, he had one of the best cars there. Won the race at Rockingham, went to Richmond, a good race car, and dominated here again today. I think all he has to do is be consistent to be a championship contender. He's had two bad races, two good races, or relatively bad races, and two good races. If he's going to win the championship, he has to be consistent. Dale Earnhardt's worst finish of the year today was fourth. He's consistent. That's why he still has the points lead. And we're going to four tough racetracks from here. Darlington, Bristol, Martinsville, North Wilkesboro. How's Jeff Gordon going to fare at those racetracks? That's going to determine what kind of chance he has winning the championship in 1995. Now, don't forget, coming up next here on ABC Sports, more racing actions. The IROC, the International Race of Champions. Benny's going to sit right here and watch the whole thing. I'll tell you what. And it is worth yeah, every it, minute of it. Second, it, it maybe definitely third. Is. Viewing. Yeah, yeah. And if you were down at Daytona, don't tell anybody <laughs> what you saw at the final lap. But do stay for that final lap. And then, of course, a week from now, it'll be the Indy Cars with the Grand Prix down at Surfer's Paradise in Australia, the second race of the Indy Car season. Well, the sun comes out just over the horizon as it begins to set. Here just south of Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta Motor Speedway, a magnificent facility. Those beautiful new condominiums looking superb as they sit over turn two. And all of this overseas a celebration for the Rainbow Warriors and Jeff Gordon, the fourth victory of his Winston Cup career. The 24 car takes the win here today. Well, don't forget, IROC is next. Our live coverage here at Atlanta comes to an end. I'm Paul Page for Benny Parsons, Bob Jenkins, Jerry Punch, John Kernan, and Jack Aruth. Thanks for spending the day with us, and stay tuned for the International Race of Champions.